and good morning and welcome to Sewing Street on the second day of spring. Oh, how cool is that? So today was like light. It was light, although I think, isn't it this weekend, the clocks go forward, so it'll get dark again and then it'll get light again. I think it's this week, this weekend. I was driving on the motorway this morning trying to work it out. So if the clocks go forward, how does that, it got really complicated. Anyway, beautiful morning today. I had my vaccine on Friday, so I'm very excited. I know I've still got to wear my mask and everything, but hey, I had my vaccine. Didn't get any reaction either, so I was really pleased. I was expecting a whole of day on the sofa. Didn't get it, didn't get it. So that was fine. All done, all done and covered now. Lovely, lovely. So. We, yeah, still got another one to come, but I don't know when yet. So some people, you get to book them when you book the first one, but mine, they tell me later. Depends where you go, I think. Anyway, very, very exciting. So I hope you've had yours too, or you're going to have it soon. But um, dinner, quite excited, dinner. Right, we have got some really lovely things for you today on the show. We've got Sally Ann as a guest, Bird of the Month again. We're now on March, can't believe we've done three. That's coming up at nine o'clock. But before we do any of that, we've got the early bird. Really excited about this one. It's Thermalam. Thermalam, alama, ding dong. It always makes me think of that song that came from Greece. Thermalama, ding dong. Anyway, in Thermalam, you get this a pre cut piece. It's a metre long by 90 centimetres wide. Now, it's um, an interfacing, but the great thing about it is it's thermal, so it's very super pressed, like a wadding. So it keeps the heat, it insulates some heat, but it's also cold. So it's perfect for picnic bags. And, it, and because it's like a wadding, it gives it a nice um, substance as well. So for things like hot things, you would use them for table mats, pot holders, cafetiere covers, tea cozies, all of that. If you're using it to put something really hot on, then use two or three layers just to give that extra layer of insulation. It's not it's not going to keep a really, like if you put a big hot pan on the table, you would need more. But you know the um, soup bowl warmers that we've done before? Perfect for that. It's um, it's really nice. Now there is another one, I think Insulbrite, that's got a metal sort of thread through it and you can't put that in the microwave, but this one doesn't. It's just a very pressed wadding, but it's got a really nice feel to it. It's lovely to sew with. It's um, It cuts beautifully, but it's very soft. So it, even if you don't want to use it for heat or cold insulation, it's a really nice wadding on its own. Um, but it's very, very compressed. You know how some waddings, if you've got, say, cut a circle for wadding, it's quite hard because it's got because it's got that loft to it. But because this is very pressed, so if you were doing something like cutting circles and you wanted to add wadding to it, this is perfect for it. So although it's insulating, you don't have to use it for that. So the offer today it's four forty nine for the whole meter piece, which is a how much saving, Hannah? Just one moment. £1.50 saving and it is a great product to have so if you make want to make some table mats or you know that sort of table runner that you put down the centre of your table and you put your pots on but because you've got such a big piece metre by 90 centimetres it's fantastic um, put a couple of layers on we've got a review from Sue a review from Sue who says bought it to make a series of pot holders perfect for the project yeah, it really is but you know as I say if you want a bit of extra insulation use a couple of layers but it is really nice to sew and quilt through so you can use it as normal wadding but it will give you that heat so thinking about the summer and going outside if you're making um like a, a um like a picnic cool bag or um wendy orlando used it for the pan protectors Oh yes, she said, because although they weren't going to get hot, because it was an awkward shape, it was easier to cut. But they'd be really good for the wine coolers as well, because they do, because it's insulated, so it does the cold and the hot. I mean, obviously it's not going to keep your bottle of wine cold for the whole afternoon, but it's it just gives you that extra layer. So it's a whole one metre and 90 centimetre width, so it's a, it's a really good size, and there's enough here if you want to add a bit more. So a quarter of the stock is already gone, which I'm not surprised. I mean, it's a it's a brilliant quality. It's Vlyseline. We know Vlyseline. It used to be called Violin, and then they merged with someone else, and it became Vlyseline. But in the old days, Violin. So you know it's a branded, very good quality product. But it is a brilliant thing to have. Um, oh, and you can put it in the machine as well. Even better. Even better. So that's the early bird. Now, that will be on sale all day um, until stocks last, because obviously once it's sold out, it's gone. But otherwise, it will be on sale all day. But tomorrow, the price will go back up again. 
we go back up again. So I would pop that in your basket now. Well, we sold over 100 units. Not surprised because it's a marvellous product. Really, really, really good. But don't worry, we still do have stock of it. We have put quite a lot in because we know how popular it is. Oh, we've got a message from Carol. What does Carol say? Um, the Thermalam quilts beautifully and hangs nicely in a wall hang. Gosh, that's a really good idea. Oh, thank you for that, Carol. That's a brilliant. Because, you know, a lot, I think a lot of the time you think, oh, well, it only does one thing. But actually, um, it is better for putting in a wall hanging than ordinary wadden because it is, it is compressed. Should we open it all out so you can see as well? I'm going to... Um, but remember, it's 90 centimetre width, which is quite good because a lot of these Vlycelene products, things like Styleville and others, are only 70 centimetres width. But this is 90 centimetres. So you've almost got a metre square. But for all your hot and cold products or quilting difficult shaped pieces like circles, table runner, it'd be great for a table. Actually, you could get that all the way across your table, couldn't you? In fact, if you were doing, you know, one of those table runners that goes down the centre that you put your pots on so you don't have table mats, you, you know, if you think of the width of it, you could get three layers. You could put a really hot dish on that and then you could just, and then you put a nice bit of patchwork or applique or embroidery on the top, quilt the back, lovely. And it will quilt really nicely. It's got a really nice drape to it as well, so it will um, hang nicely as well. It's not too stiff. Right, so that's that one. Coming up today, we have eight o'clock. Um, we've got Sally Ann, she's here already. She's got beautiful Dresden plate quilt. Already selling, not surprised. We've got um, the instructions. We've got the instructions with the bundles. We've got two choices for you. It's a beautiful quilt, look at that. Anyway, she's gonna go through all the technicalities and how to do it. Um, nine o'clock, bird of the month. We are now on March, so February ended up in March because we had a few problems, but we are back on track now. And this month we have, March is the bullfinch. Ooh, isn't he beautiful? So this month I've made him into a cosmetic bag. So when we get to nine o'clock, I'll show you how to make it. And you can buy the panel or the instructions and the instructions you can use to make any of the um, other ones. But this month it's a lovely curved shaped cosmetic bag of the bullfinch. So we'll talk about him later. 10 o'clock, Sally Ann is back with us. Um, she's doing a really, really good masterclass on the Creative Grids Diamond and Lone Star Ruler. Because you know there's loads of these Creative Grid rulers and we're never really sure what to do, how you use them. So she's gonna go through it in great detail. It's a real technical learning masterclass. But she's, we have got in stock the Barley Pops Stripes fabric. So this beautiful batty, um, Barley Batik fabric. We've seen them before in the Barley Pops, which are just the very small pieces, but we've got them by the half metre. Um, first time ever. So ru masterclass ruler, brand new fabric. How exciting is that? Then at 11 o'clock, tools and patterns, mainly focusing on embroidery. We've got quite a few things on there. I'm going to show you how to use iron-on transfers and how to use a light box to transfer. So a lot of talk about embroidery and other things. So that's going to be an interesting one. Then at 12 o'clock, we've got Yarn Lane. Very excited for that one too. We have got macrame for the first time. We've never done macrame before, but you know, <laughs> I luckily on Yarn Lane, I'm allowed to do anything that's vaguely yarn. So, <laughs> and, um, the kits are already there on pre-order. We've got Carrie Ann coming in. It's beautiful kits from Wool Couture, who we featured before, but this is macrame. So if you think of macrame as the 1970s and spider plants, this is like that, but way, way better. Macrame is really on trend at the moment. Anyway, if you've never done it or you have done it and you want to do it again, 12 o'clock, come and see <coughs> us on Yarn Lane for macrame. Okay. We've also, before we go, before we go to Sally Ann, we have got some patterns back in stock that we're going to be talking about at 11 o'clock. But I wanted to highlight them because they sold out and we haven't had them in stock for a while, but we have got them back in stock. Now, these are just the patterns. We've got them, the small and the large. So this is the, that's the small one. Is that, which one's this? The round one is the small one. So there's the pattern for the small one. Now they are on pre-order because they sold out last time. So I just wanted to show you now so you know. So these are the little ones. These little round ones, aren't they sweet? So the full pattern, everything in there. It's not a kit, it's just the instructions. 
but we've only had them on on Sewing Street once before, completely sold out. So I just wanted to highlight that now, so you didn't miss out because they are on pre-order. We've also got the large ones, which look like this. Again, sold out on their first show, but back in stock. Back in stock. Um, so if you want to buy them on pre-order, the easiest way to do that is you click on www.sewingstreet.com on the website. And then if you click on, if you see where the um, where I am on the screen, then scroll down below that and you can see, oh sorry, click on watch live. <coughs> and then if you scroll down <coughs> below that, then <coughs> it will split in two. It will be what's already been on and what's on pre-order. So if you click on pre-order, everything that's coming up that we haven't shown yet, then you can buy it beforehand. It's a really good way of buying so that you can concentrate on the demo. Oh look, there's all the new fabrics. There's the barley pops. There's all the tools that are gonna to be in. We're getting there. Scroll faster, scroll faster. <laughs> there we go, there they are. So it's just a good way of you getting them rather than if you're not gonna be around at 11 or you're worried about them selling out. But also, if, if when we have um, all our lovely demonstrators showing what they're doing, if you want to concentrate on the demo but make sure that you've got the kit ready, then it's just a really good way of having it in your basket all done and then you can concentrate on the demo. So anyway, that's 11 o'clock. I'll move that to one side. So we have got Sally Ann. Um, oh, we've got an e oh, we've got an email. Sorry. If you want to message the studio, last last thing before we just meet Sally Ann. If you want to message the studio, <coughs> you need to go studio at sewingstreet.com. Please do message us. We love having you emails. We like your questions, but we also like to hear about things that you've done that you've made that are similar to the sort of thing that we've we're doing or you know just to share a few comments it's really nice and bits of tips and advice like the the last lady you know when we read the review said she'd used it and what she thought of it so please do message us um or you can go onto facebook sewing street tv and message us that way anyway so <coughs> we have got <coughs> the instructions for the sunny dresden quilt that sally ann's going to be demonstrating gorgeous so these we'll start off with the instructions so we have got, because sometimes we only do it in a kit, but we are also doing the instructions just on their own. So we've got a choice for you. So if you want to have just the instructions, they are these, yeah, so they are 9 99 That's just the instructions. So picture of it on the front. Obviously, you know, if you've seen, if you've seen Sally Ann's instructions before, you will know how comprehensive they are. They've got everything you need, all the cutting out, all the pictures, and every single step she's taken a photo of and put it into the instructions. So it's really clear, really un easy to understand. So if you've never tried Dresden Plate, but you'd like to give it a go, because it is quite stunning. It does look really clever. And I think that's quite nice of quilting if you make something that looks quite clever. But she's broken it down step by step, so it's quite easy to understand. So she goes through the whole thing. So if you just want the instructions on their own, because you might have some fabric that, and you, that you want to use to make it, because it does use sort of smaller pieces of fabric, then that's the instructions on there. And it's got all the templates you'll need as well. Okay, so 9.99, that's on screen at the moment, TJS 760. This is the first time that we've had these before brand new to air today but we have also got two beautiful fabric bundles so let's start with the liberty bundle this is the one that sally ann's doing in the demo in this bundle there are is 10 and a half meters of fabric so we were having a chat before because there's obviously a lot of choice of fabric here but there is more than enough you could make with the liberty part for the dressing plates you could make two at least two quilts with this you will have plenty left over and it is liberty so in this bundle you get half meters let me move the instructions so you can see beautiful blue this is from the orchard garden collection you've got that lovely blueprint they were all a half a meter and then a sort of a pinchy pinky corally print and there's enough in here to make the whole of the front of the quilt you'll need extra for backing but you will have lots of liberty left over that you can use for other makes or you can make another quilt or make a bigger one you could use use it on the back maybe as well or we'll use it for other things but it's nice to have a bit left over so that you know when you're making it's not really tight but we wanted to give you a nice choice We've got this beautiful one that's got that lovely coral background 
Because they're all from the Orchard Garden collection, you know that the colours coordinate. So the peachy colour in the background of this um, echoes the colours in this flower. You've got this one with the pinky background. And then you've got this lovely white one with the very small sprigs. And this one, look, I think it's, I think it's peaches. Or is it nectarines? Orange, it's called oranges. I think they look like peaches actually. Peaches and butterflies. The same one in pink. I'm gonna to have to keep moving them up so you can see them all properly. It's lovely, like blue and white, real um, sort of delft blue colours. In pink as well. And then we've got, no, it looks, I know it might look on screen like a plain white, but it has actually got a sort of a creamy ivory print on it. Can you see? It's very subtle, but it just gives it a little bit of tone and balance and movement that, it, that a plain one doesn't. And then finally, you've got this lovely one. It's like a heart-shaped scroll. It's beautiful. So that's all of those. You also get a metre of the pink fabric, which is used for the centres of the Dresden plates and also for the borders. Oh, it's two metres. Oh, I thought I was good at fabric. You normally hold it. No. Um, and so you, this is used for the borders, the centres, the little squares and the binding as well. And then you've got the ivory fabric, which two and a half metres, and that's used for all the background. Now, this bundle, ten and a half metres, is 129.99. Now, what's fantastic is that takes you over the 99.99, so it's eligible for split pay. Now, the way that split pay works is that we will split it over two months. So you pay $64.99 today, and then in a month's time, you pay another $64.99. No interest at all, and that's brilliant, isn't it? So it's not that if you choose split pay, you have to pay more, still costs exactly the same. And you get sent it straight away. So it's not that when you pay in another month's time and finish it with sending, you get it straight away. So it's just a, it's just an option. You don't have to use split pay. You can pay for it all in one go. But if you want to spread the cost over two months, if you like the idea of having 10 and a half metres of fabric and these beautiful ray, array of Liberty fabrics and make the quilt because the instructions come with this bundle. So you do get all the instructions and this, 129.99, but you can split it across. And this is a real heirloom quilt. Oh yeah, so you remember you do get the instructions with it, but it is really is a work of art. It's an heirloom quilt, it's something you can make. And because you get so much liberty, if you wanted to make the quilt bigger, you can. You will need more background fabric and more borders, but you could make it even bigger. And that's just a really nice way of making a beautiful heirloom quilt. Now, there are less than 20 of this bundle left. I mean, we knew it was going to be popular because we all love Liberty, don't we? So if you want it, you need to put it in your basket and you do need to check out because if you don't check out, people can take it out of your basket. But 129.99 for a Liberty quilt in this beautiful pattern as well. I mean, that's amazing value for money. And remember, if you want to do split pay, you can split it over the two months. We also have another bundle, which I'm going to. This one is Moda, so equally beautiful quality. So this is the same price point, which is great because Moda is fantastic quality. Again, remember it's available on split pay, $64.99 now, $64.99 in another month's time, but you will get it straight, straight away and it's no interest. So um, free instructions, not free instructions, it comes with the instructions. They come in the bundle, they're not free. But you do get the instructions and then these are all from the Daybreak Three Sisters range of Moda. So therefore, you know the colours will coordinate. They're beautiful, aren't they? I'm going to take out the teal ones to start with. So you get that lovely teal with the coral flower print and birds. And then a smaller teal print, one with little flowers. And then you move into the mustard. But it's all from the same range, so you know it will all coordinate, the Three Sisters range. And then the small print, and this little spriggy print. It's really, um, it's very traditional. I think it will go in most, I imagine you, well, you could use it as a wall hanging. If it was mine, I'd put it on my bed. But isn't it beautiful? I mean, Dresden Play is very one of those traditional patchwork blocks, isn't it, that you sort of identify with patchwork. And this is a lovely colour range. It's 
it's very warm. I think it will go with most interiors. I love that one, that beautiful paisley print. And then you've got a lovely navy with little birds all over it. And that's the same fabric as the teal there. Those two are exactly the same, but just different colourways. Can you see that? Um, then you get a really lovely navy stripe that's got little black sprigs within it. And the same with the ivory, with the red sprigs. So you can see how all these colours are sort of being pulled through in each of the prints and then repeated. And then you've got a larger print there. And it's up to you how you use them and where you place them. You and it's nice because some people will just use them randomly, but you could also, you know, really choose what you put when. You could have each Dresden plate is different. You can have them all random. It's, it's your quilt and your choice. And remember, you are going to have loads left over for your stash, or you can make it bigger by buying some more background fabric, or you could make two. And also this quilt which has got um show you in the picture it's also got a flying geese border so it's not just your dresden plate you've got a piece around the edge and you've got the flying geese all the way around so it really is a work of art you then get this lovely gold that's used for the um borders and the binding in the center of the dresden plates and the little squares and that coordinates beautifully there's two meters of that it goes really well with the navy but also it echoes the mustard in here and loves lovely and then you've got two and a half meters of white that's used for all of the background and remember split pay is available on this kit as well now this one less than 20 as well so which one's winning hannah is it liberty or is it moda mm. Right, so the Liberty is winning at the moment because we only have 12 of those left. It's obviously very popular, but if you want it, I mean, it is going to look stunning. Sally Ann is going to be demonstrating using the Liberty so you can see what that looks like in action, but it's not very difficult to picture what the Moda will look like in action because it's beautiful. Oh, we've got a question from Collector for Sally Ann. What is the finished size of the Dresden quilt? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. <laughs> very Is good question. Should we have a look in the instructions? There you go. Quilt there we go. Size 63 and a half square. Oh, that's a really nice size. Yeah. Well, you can see there how big it is. Mm. So you've used your own fabric for this one. Why yes. did you choose a Dresden plate? What was your inspiration? Um, I looked around on Pinterest mm. and I found <laughs> bits and pieces of quilts that I liked and okay. I just of, of Dresdens and I amalgamated it in one in one Okay. Quilt. So, so thought, I like flying geese, I like Dresdens. I liked this accent as well. So I saw that in one of them. Oh gosh. I saw that in one of them. Mm. Um, the, most of the quilts that I saw were much bigger, but I wanted something that was a bit more sofa sort of. Yes, yeah, I mean it's wall hanging sofa, but yeah. it is bed as well, isn't yeah. it? Um, and then I, I added that there's a brick border. Yeah, no, I like the brick. It's nice that you've got all the different things. It does look like a real sort of piece of patchwork art, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I really loved making it. And then obviously the flying geese, um, you know, one of those sort of methodical. Yeah, but it's lovely because you've used one palette of prints and then they all go throughout. It, it blends beautifully yeah, together. Yeah, they're all like 30s prints that I've used. I sort of collected them over many years. So if if you're the same and you've done that as well, we do have the instructions on their own, 9.99. So if you've got a collection of fabrics that you want to use, then we do have the instructions on their own. It's up to you. You can buy the bundle with the instructions or just the instructions. Um, we've also got some backing fabric if you need to, um, if you want to back, back it. But if you have a look on um, pre-order, you can see them all there. So... Right, that's all the bundles. Now you know what you need to buy. So where do we start then? Okay. Where do we start? So um, I'm going to try and give you like a little bit of a whistle-stop tour. Okay. Um, and we'll start with the blocks and we'll sort of work our way out and see how far we get. Um, so I've pieced together to start off with an actual Dresden plate. And I think I sent in there's some more pictures of this somewhere. Yeah. Yes, okay. we're just going to get those. Yeah, just so that you can see what it looked like. So this is a complete... Dresden plate. It's got 16 Using segments. Using the Liberty. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, obviously, and then it's got an applique centre that needs to be um, appliqued down. But I wanted you to see that and what I'll do is I'll start going backwards okay. now. It does look lovely together. So could you um, sort of change the colours? Could you have a different, could you have different prints in each Dresden plate? Yes. And you definitely. just need to play with it, decide yes. what you want. Because you've used the sort of the same mixture in each one. 
Yeah, so when, they, when you buy a collection like this, they do all the hard work for you because um, scale is also important as well as colour. And right. like, if you look at the Liberty collection, the scale varies. Yes, it does. So if yes. you're looking to put your own fabric collection in, mm. I wouldn't think just about the colour, think about the scale of things as well. I mean, like okay. this piece in particular, that's a much stronger scale and this is much smaller. Mm. That adds interest. Okay, so is it good to vary the scale? Yes, yes, definitely. As well as the colour? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so it's not that you've got to only have small prints. It's nice to have. Yeah, exactly. A, a variety. Size. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got to say this before I go on. Is also with the pattern. Um, if you buy one of my patterns, you get. Um, it makes you eligible to join my pattern club. So mm. I've got like a little pattern club that people join, and basically they share all their makes, and we share tips, etc. If you want to do that after you've bought the pattern from yes. from you, and the pattern is in the bundle yeah, as well. You just need to contact me. So it's Sally at sallyannquilts.com. Okay, is that in here? No. Well, right. Uh, I don't think it's. Oh yeah, sallyannquilts.com is, yeah. is on the bottom. It's on the bottom of yeah. every page. Yep. Along, <laughs> along, along with the SKU number. So if you can't, so if you buy the pattern, which you can either buy separately or in the bundle, Sally Ann's website is on there. And you can go into that. Yeah, I mean, do come and join club. us because you can see in there um, previous quilts that people have made. I mean, people have. Oh, have so it gives that. you a few yeah, ideas gives you as some well. Ideas. Also, if you get stuck, you know, there's people in there that can go. Oh, yeah, you need to do this. Oh, or that's brilliant. Whatever. Okay. So, Okay, so, so where, where do you start? Okay, then? so let's start with actually making the background behind the Dresden, mm. which seems quite straightforward, but just a few little tips with that. So here's your background square. And what you're going to do is you're going to take four squares and just apply them to the corners. Oh, so it's, it's funny, isn't it? When it's all quilted, it looks like one big piece of fabric, but it's separate squares. Yeah. So I'm just going to pin that in place. So I've drawn a diagonal pencil line across it, and I'm just going to sew slightly to the right of that line. Okay. I'm using a fancy new machine. That's a very lovely machine you've got there. <gasps> right, let's hope I can <laughs> get it sorted. Because it's got like a special foot, isn't it? That it'll hover and stuff. Here we go. Yeah, so you want to sew very slightly to the right of the line. Um, because you're going to use up some fabric when you fold it back. If you understand oh, okay. What I mean. So by going, is it like just a fabric thread, the other side? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Right, the unusual thing about this is that I would press it before I cut it. I don't know if you can see where I'm going with this. Yep. So half of the stock of the Liberty bundle has already gone. So if you want it, you probably do need to check out. Okay, so what I'm doing and is... That's I'm, the one that Sally Ann's working with. I'm using the other square, can you see, to line it up. Oh, okay, so when so you go... Right, so you don't cut it first then? No, because if you cut it, cut it first, you've got nothing to use as a guide, whereas if you leave yeah, that fabric true. behind there, then you've got something to use as a guide. Oh, that's really good, because normally I sort of try and line it up, but that's much better. And also... Because it's yeah. lined up already on its own. Yeah, so the, you can either go back in now and chop it off, mm. or you could leave it in there. Ooh because it would just give you a little raised area oh, of almost true. looking like applique. Is that what you did? I didn't on that one, but, but you, yeah. yeah. no, that's quite nice, because I normally try and line it up, which is quite difficult, but if you keep the square there, yeah. that's a great tip. Okay, so that's yeah, no, that I think one. I would, I think I'd leave it there, because it does give it... A little bit of oomph. Just a little bit, yeah. doesn't it? Okay, let's move over and look at the... So the template for the little... So you do that we... to the corner, no, not the corner yes. of every square. But yes, the... they're the corners of every... Oh, yes. So you're going to do it not to every mm. corner, just to, so you're going to have to work out what you're putting in which slot. Right, okay. Yeah. Good point. Okay, so the templates, so you can take, trace off the templates. I use like template plastic or freezer paper. Okay. And cut out your little wedge segments, which are here. So here's some. So I'm going to 
so a few of those so you can see how they go together. So I'm just going to put them right sides together and I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam along the end. So that's what is going to give me the points. So you cut them all, all the shapes out using your template. Yeah. And then, so. So the top, the wide edge, you sew right yeah, sides together. Yeah, the wider edge, exactly. Okay, so I want a quarter inch seam for this. So I'm just lining up the edge of my foot so I get a quarter inch seam. And when I get to the end, I'm going to do a little reverse. <laughs> <laughs> a little reverse. A very, very, just a little fast reverse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then I would chain piece them through. Okay, so you, the wide end of all yep. of them, you just fold so in we'll half. So we'll do a few. But that's quite good, isn't it? So you're not actually having to turn edges under then, because that's always a bit tricky, isn't it, when you're appliquing? This does it for you. Yeah. If I get that super fast zoom in, turn it down. <laughs> I'm wary of it now. There we go. <laughs> right, let's put one more in so you can see. Oh, we've got a message, a message oh, from, from Sandy. Love how Sarah, Sally Ann brings beautiful patterns, great selection of Liberty fabrics from Sandy in sunny Cornwall. Ooh. Oh, I'd like to be in sunny Cornwall. Oh, thank you, Sandy. That's thank a lovely Sandy. message. I know she's, be... well, when you have patterns like this, you know, you think, oh, 9.99 or just, but this has taken Sally Ann hours <laughs> to create. The hours behind. The, the number of things that have to go wrong <laughs> to make oh, it go right. <laughs> well, whenever I write true, a pattern, though. you are right. I have to. There has to be a lot of things that go wrong until it gets to that stage. Yeah, nobody ever thinks of that, do they? The, no. The things that you put in the bin or you <laughs> yeah. stamp on and throw out the window. You don't ever tell anybody about no, that. No, and you think, oh, I thought, I'm sure that measurement was right, and then you do it. Doesn't work. So when you buy a set of instructions, particularly from someone like Sally, who's a real expert, there's a lot of time and effort that's gone behind here, and a lot of things that have gone wrong because that's the only way that you work out. It's true that you learn. You, yeah. do, you do learn, but it is, yeah. It is very don't, frustrating. You know, if, if you're at home and you don't think that. You know, other people don't have a bad day because they do. I mean, what, what I always say about it, you come across some projects that just don't want to be born. No, no. And that's how it feels. It feels like it's fighting yes. you every step of the way that you can yeah. envisage what you want to do and it just won't and it let just, you. And you just can't do it and then yeah. you have to walk away from <laughs> yeah, it and you come back walk. even sometimes weeks later. So yeah. to get from the sort of first concept of you going on Pinterest to here... Is a journey, is a journey. isn't it? It's so well, you are buying pages of expertise here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've just trimmed a little bit away from the okay. end where I've sewn to. I'm just going to turn it through. Is, this is your stiletto, isn't it? I couldn't find it. So the instructions on their own, we are down to our last 15. So if you want them, you need to check out. But they are in the bundles as well. So we've got seven Liberty bundles left and we've only got 15 sets of instructions. If you buy the bundle, the instructions are in it, don't worry. But if you want just the instructions, you need to be quick. Okay, so I'm just going to... And in the um, bundles, the plain fabrics that are used for the background and the borders, they're plain fabrics, they're not Liberty or Moda fabrics, just so you know. Because Liberty don't do... Liberty don't do solid colours in their quilting range. But then... Mm. It is quilting weight fabric, so it's fine. You know, it is the same weight. It's not like you're buying Liberty Lawn for that and then quilting weight. It is the same weight. Okay, so once you've got a few... I tended to do mine in twos, so I put them in together in twos and then fours. Right. And then eights and then, then 16. So you do you sew that and then it, that gives it a really nice point then, yes, doesn't it? So, so you've got rid of the raw edge then. Rather than having to turn over the raw yeah. edges, that works a lot better. So did you sort of work out what order you wanted in before you sewed them all together or did you just sort of go random? No, I'm a bit, a bit more of a random flying by the seat of my pants oh, yeah. person, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm a plan, I plan it, <laughs> but wanting it to look random and it never works because the more I plan, the less random it looks. I've never really quite got my head around that. 
No, I and like then I sort of look at it and go, oh no, there's two, those two are two, so I have to move them. And then it, and then it just is not random at all, like, and you have to start all over again. I suppose it, if you made all of them in advance, then you could, you'd have plenty to choose from, unless you, you get would. to the last one and realise you've only got I know people do really stress about it, but I'm just like, okay, just go for it and then look at it. And then I think, well, the bits I don't like, I'll just unpick yes, and reset. That's true. Yes, yeah. Don't overthink it. Anyway, you've got plenty of fabrics here, so the chance of you getting two the same together are slim. But you could do like one in, you could do a mustard one in the a teal one. You could really, you know, have different coloured for each one. Oh, something I haven't said is starch. Mm. Definitely, definitely starch your fabric. Okay. Yeah, before you begin. So best press is okay? Best press or even heavier, you know, heavy starch. Okay. Have we got best press on the website, Hannah? Okay. She's just checking. So I'm just going to give these a little press. So as I say, I've got three here, but I generally would do two and then four and then eight and then put... Are you cutting on the bias here? Is that why you yes. use starch? Right, okay. So, you know, I definitely wouldn't use steam. Okay. Yeah, because it's very tempting, especially when, when I've done it. Mm. When you've made your beautiful little Dresden and you look at it and you think, oh, just need to get it really, really flat. And you think, oh, turn the iron right up, I'll get it on mm. steam, whoop. You know, and the water's coming out and the steam's yeah. coming out and it's getting flatter and it's looking great. And then you look at it and you think, it's no longer a circle anymore. Because the because steam has walked in. Yeah. Yes, see, now that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> yeah. Because I've I done love, that. I love a bit of steam pressing yeah, exactly. and I think, oh, lovely. Yeah, and when you, and that sort of drive to yeah, get it yeah, really definitely. flat and yeah. Really, yeah. And it warps it all. Yeah, it warps it all. But if you've starched if it. If you've starched it, it's going to be better, but even so, still throw away steam from the it. steam. Steam it after when it's all sewn down. Yeah. <laughs> if you really need to. Okay, so just so that you can see. So there's three. I don't know if I'm in the. So you're beginning to sort of build. Yeah, I think you just around. need to move it over a little bit. You're sort of underneath all the graphics at the minute. Am I? Oh, yeah. There you go. Lovely. Okay, so you can see I've actually pressed the seams open. Right. Yeah. To make it lie flat. Yeah. I've also done a little reverse there and I've sewn down towards the middle every single time I've repeated the same process. Okay. Rather than sewing out. And the reason for that is you don't really worry too much if those don't meet because they're going to be under your circle. But right. you do want but to get a crisp crucial. edge. Yeah. Okay. There. So start there. Okay. Lots of love. Lots of love for Sally Ann from you all. <laughs> Message Hello. from Joanne. Sally Ann is lovely. I have learned a lot from her pattern, such clear instructions and a great teacher. Fab demo today. Aww. Thank you, team. Well, oh, thank you for that lovely message. It's really Aww. nice. Um, the pattern on its own has now sold out. Oh. <laughs> so if you want it, you can get it, but you will have to buy the bundle because it is in the bundle, but you can't buy it on its own. It's a beautiful pattern. I'm not surprised. Beautiful. And I told you, there's hours, hours of work and frustration have <laughs> <laughs> gone into this. I can imagine. Okay, should we move on to the centre now then? Yes. So the centre... Because this is quite intriguing how you do this. Yeah, so I applique my centre on and I use like a bagging out or a turn through technique. Right. So there's a circle in the back. We had a conversation about this, didn't we? We did, yes. There's I was a quite circle in the back in and... This, I mean, I pull, I've made this loads of times and I pulled this template out to do this particular Dresden and it wasn't quite big enough. And the only thing I can put it down to is the fact because there are so many seams going round, mm. you only need to be a very tiny amount out on each one and the, your circle size will vary yes. incredibly. Yes. So... I, although it says two and three quarter inches, I would wait until you had your your Dresden complete. Okay. Yeah. So that you can see. And then measure the across. Aperture in, in right. Because if your you if your that? circle's a little bit bigger, it doesn't matter. No. So wait until it's complete before you go. Okay, I'm going to cut all my circles two and three quarters, or I'm going to cut them three and a quarter, mm. or I'm going to cut them a little bit bigger. And also, there's some personal preference as well here. You know. Yeah, Whether you want true. a big or yeah, you just you want don't a have to have a little circle, cool. you can no, have a bigger you, you one. You can go bigger, yeah. Mm. Could embroider a face on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where did I go with what I had? Because you could embellish the circle with embroidery, couldn't you? 
put some initials on it. Oh yeah. If you're making it for somebody or yeah, you a can date. Do yeah, you could. You could put initials in it, or you could put. I mean, I, I'm a sucker for lace. A little bit of lace all the way mm. around the edge. Looks, yeah, you know. But if you were making it like, say, as a wedding gift or something, yeah. you could put the date and names and a smile. <laughs> smile. Well, it looks like a little face. So I'm just gonna so you run draw... this together. So I have a piece of lightweight violin here, sewing violin. Not iron on. We've had this discussion. Do not <laughs> use iron on. Do not use iron on. But the reason I don't want you to use iron on is we're going to turn this through and if you use iron on that glue means you'll end up with quite a hard piece and you want a quilt to drape you don't want a hard rigid circle you want it to bend so what if you haven't got any of that sewing what would you use instead tumble dryer sheets <laughs> obviously <laughs> or another piece of fabric <laughs> or yeah if or you haven't got tumble dry another sheets. piece of pink can you iron tumble dry sheets then never yeah. tried it it's amazing. I've got. Or you just use another piece of pink fabric. But the idea of using the sewing, Sally, I was saying, is that it just makes it a bit softer and not quite as thick. But yeah. you could use that, or a thin fabric, or a tumble dry. I haven't used tumble dry sheets for ages. So, I'm going to try that. I'm going to buy some. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I remember when they first came out. That's quite some time ago. And we used to use them. I haven't used them for ages. I've got a box in the cupboard that I, I and that probably used use more for sewing <laughs> than <laughs> I've used in the tumble dryer. It's, it's like, like grease proof paper. It's like, oh, I've run out of, you know, the sewing filing. Oh, I'm just going to get another a tumble dryer sheet. And I've even put it, this is so bad. I've even put it in the dryer on its own just to get rid of the oh, right. <laughs> newness of it. So it's a bit softer <laughs> for the quilt. But then I use grease proof paper more for tracing designs than I do for cooking. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> So I'm just going to sew round the edge so of the no circle. So there's no seam allowance or anything, you just sew yeah. round the edge of the Once circle. Once you've determined, you know, the size yes. you want for your circle, yeah. Yeah. just sew round. So if you need it bigger, just yeah. draw one or draw round something. Um, and use a smaller stitch if you can and, and try and pivot so that you get a nice smooth edge. So take this one slow then. Yes, so it's just sew a few, pivot. I mean, this machine's got a knee lift, which I didn't get out of the box because I knew that if I got it out of the box, I'd be very tempted to use it and fall over. So. <laughs> it's not as easy when you're standing up, is it? No. I don't seem to be getting any speed. I mean, I'm either going crazy speed or it's really slow. Well, the good thing about that machine is it's got so many different settings, doesn't it? So you can set it to for you personally yeah. exactly whether you want it, how fast you want it, how slow. So. It's a bit like driving someone else's car, isn't it? The seats are yeah, in the wrong exactly. place. Yeah, exactly. The seats are in the wrong place. How are we doing for time? All right. Yeah, you've got about like that, about twelve minutes and twenty-three okay. seconds. About <laughs> ish. No pressure. There is something that I haven't pressed on here, isn't there? There's got to be. Well, you because you set it, whoever used it last will have set it to <laughs> for them, won't they? To do the super fast or the slow. Yeah, I've, I've turned it up to the little rabbit, but nothing, it doesn't seem, oh. you know, the hair rather, it doesn't seem to be hairing along. <laughs> no idea. Okay, let's keep going. Nearly there. Oh, there you go. I think perhaps some of it is the place I've got the foot. And then you just go back over the first stitches. So take this one nice and slow because in order to get a perfect circle in the middle you do need to sew yeah. on the line. But at least you've got a line to follow. And if you think about it, if you think about sort of a bigger stitch, you're, you can see that with a bigger stitch you're going to get little yeah. all the way around yeah. the edge of your circle. So what size stitch would you use for that? Two generally. Okay. And I, oh there they are. Pinking shears. I would mm. pink round it as well. Ooh. They're on the website. If you haven't got pinking shears, I was watching um, Pointless the other day, and one of the answers, did anyone see that, was pinking shears, and they got they didn't know. They didn't know what it was to start with. I was shouting at the telly. With a sewing smugness, which I'm sure all of you would do as well. I can't even remember. Well, they showed pictures of them, and people didn't even know what they were. I thought, fancy not knowing what pinking shoes are. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's really nice, isn't it, when you know something like that that's a bit niche. You can be really smug. You can be there <laughs> on pointless pinking shears like, of course, 
know that, know that. Okay, so that just helps you get rid of the, the, the sort of the bulk the in bulk. the sink. So yeah. the pink and shears reduce the bulk. Yeah. So then you're just going to cut through the back. Only through the back, not yeah, through the front. Yeah, not through the front. Because that's all going to be hidden, Yeah. that little snip when you make the quilt. Do you have to be careful? I've not done it with that. Does it tear very easily? Do you have to be careful when you're turning it out? The tumble dryer sheets are a bit hit and miss. <laughs> <laughs> but but this them. is fine. But, uh, so the, the sewing interfacing is fine. I, and if you use the same fabrics so or the cotton fabric, that would be okay. Yeah, if you use, but don't be tempted to go pink white though, because no. you you would p possibly get like a little bit of a ring, wouldn't you? Right. So if you're going to use cotton fabric, use the same one, yeah. and you will have more than enough to, in your. But if you buy the bundle, then you'll have more than enough of the pink to do the back in it. If you haven't got tumble dry sheets or violin. <laughs> okay, so I'm just sort of. This is always worth doing as well. Sorry about my lockdown fingernails. It's worth sort of like rolling the edge as well, to sort of get it nice and smooth. And again... Hannah's booked to have her nails done <laughs> now. Mm. Hannah and Kat are going together to have their nails done. And why? You're, you're, you're not even on air. I tell you what, when Hannah and Kat have been to have their nails done, we're going to get them on air and they can show <laughs> us. It will be very exciting. Is that like the first day of lockdown open? <laughs> you're having your nails done. So, yeah, they're... There's your That is circle. a perfect circle. Yeah. There you go. And so does it just cover the ends? Is it just, you know, if you... If yeah, well, so this say you've gone, you seem Lance have gone out slightly, how much bigger do you need it to be? I reckon that you can, it can vary by about half an inch. So that's two and three quarters. Right. I've gone up to three and a quarter, so... Oh, okay. It's up to you. But how much does it need to cover the ends of the... I would say you need to cover the ends by a quarter of an inch. Okay, right. Yeah. So that's that bit. And then you just, what do you, did you hand stitch it on? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rushing on us. That's all right. Um, I would use the same machine and do like a hemming stitch. And people that know me know I'm a big fan of invisible thread. Okay. So a hemming stitch all the way around here would work on the machine. Or like, or, like a top stitch. Or you could top stitch it, yeah, mm. you could do. Or you could zigzag it, just if you wanted to just use a straight zigzag. Okay. Make it really narrow and it will mm. disappear. Um, or, or you can hand stitch, stitch it. it. Okay. Silk thread, lightweight threads, 80 weight threads. Okay, so an 80 weight. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you don't want it standing out too much. No. But just, just to hold it on. No. Okay. Nice. Right. So you then, make lots of those. Yep. So the next bit out would be the bricks, which is quite straightforward. It tells you in the pattern what size to cut the bricks so okay. that it fits. And then the next bit would be the flying geese. Oh, we've got some 80 weight. Actually, we've done this before. The Calm Collection, the Orifield Calm Collection. If you look on pre-order, we've got on there. But this is perfect, isn't it? This is 80 weight or a film. Yeah, that's beautiful. And this is beautiful, and it's really yeah. Because this collection, the Calm collection, is all those nice, um, they, well, I'll show you a picture of what they're like inside, but they're all neutral colours, so they will be perfect for either of these bundles. There's a picture in a minute, we'll just show you a picture of, those are the colours you get. So that's 80 weight that Sally was talking about. So it's finer than your, no the normal thread that you use in your machine is 50. Yep. The higher the number, the finer the thread. So this is, um, a finer thread and it's in all those lovely neutral colours so that is perfect for either hand or machine stitching some it's applique so it's your this is the perfect applique thread in fact they should call it that It'd be simpler wouldn't it yeah each spool's got 274 meters so it lasts quite a while as well and it's orophil isn't it and the bobbins are made of cherry wood which is very important <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you can keep them then if you collect bobbins, but they are really nice. They've got nice cherry I wood. bet you someone's thought of something to do with those bobbins. Oh, yeah, definitely. I bet you there's oh, something, definitely. somebody out there cutting them up and mm. making them into something else. Yeah, <laughs> well, you could wrap fabric around the centre and then sort of hang them up. Yeah, that would look yeah. cool. Put your bias binding around them. Yeah. Ready to go. Christmas decorations. Fantastic. See? So, flying geese. Okay, flying geese. Um, yep, <laughs> so I made some earlier. So here's a few just so that you can see. Oh, it looks nice in that yeah, blue. In so that's blue. in the Liberty blue one. Oh, that's in that one, isn't it? If from the Liberty bundle. 
that's that one. Okay, so generally, so, ooh, there we go, that's from that one. That's lovely. So generally you would cut your, so the, the flying geese units in this quilt are four by two finished. Okay. So generally you would cut your pieces and you would sew along this line. Can you move it just right a peel bit? Peel it back. Sort of lovely, yeah. thank you. Sew along this line, iron it in position like I did earlier, mm. cut off that edge and then do the same with the other one. That is the traditional way to make a flying right. geese unit. But? But, <laughs> and that's why I was I rushing. knew there was a but. <laughs> that's why I was rushing on. Okay. There is another way to make four at the same time. Oh, oh. So. I've not done that. Yeah. I've only ever done them one at a time. Okay, so let's see, have a go. See if we can have a go at making four at the same time. So this one is, where's my little ruler gone? The, oh, you've got, there might be a tape measure hanging behind your quilt. Probably, let's see if I can measure this one. So this one is five and a quarter, and these are two and seven eighths. And from that, we're hoping to make four, um, four by two inch finished flying geese. Right, okay. That's what we're aiming for. And is that all in the instructions? No, this is not in the instructions. Okay. All that's in the instructions is the traditional method. Right. I thought I'd just show you another okay. way because you're gonna have to make so many. True, so you may as well go for go, it. Go for making them in bulk. It's gonna help, so we're gonna pin these on. So you put your squares yep. in opposite so corners. corners. So. I guess you could probably look online for if you put in flying geese maths. I yes, put in probably. HST maths when I want to know how to cut, like, what if I want eight of them, because you can do eight at once with those, and I can never remember what the maths is, but it, you, there's loads of different charts that you can find online to do this, to find out what the measurements are. Okay, so I'm just sewing a quarter of an inch away from that pencil line. So you think you ever invented this, making four at a time? Think how many mistakes they made <laughs> until they yeah. worked that one out, and then they bought a calculator. <laughs> Try and keep it as straight as you can in the centre. Because you look at that thing, how is that going to work? Yep, you do mm. indeed. But it's like when you do HSTs in eights, you think, who oh, worked that out then? You do that and you cut that and it all works. Let's have a ruler. Oops. Don't worry. I'll get the bag in a I'll pick him I up just in need a, bit. a straight edge, really. This will do. So I'm just going to cut across the pencil line. to the iron board. So you cut it yep. across the middle, middle. Give it a and now press. you're going to fold these out this way. So I'm setting the seam and then folding them outwards. There we go. Okay, so then you're going to take the other two that you've got ah, put them okay. in the other corners. So, yes, yeah, so you can't do all those at the beginning, otherwise you'd end up cutting a bit of them off. Yeah. So then you're going to do exactly the same thing again, so either side of that pencil line. It's nice doing it this way, though, because you get the four. Yes. Quite satisfying. Because you need quite a lot going around the edge of there, don't you? 
Yeah, it does say in the pattern. Mm, so it's I'll quite. A, you look at the number and think. Oh, Ooh, really? But when you divide <laughs> it by four, I'm going to find it. It's probably at the front where it says. Only 108. <laughs> Only 108. Okay. Oh, we've got a message from Beverly. Hi, Hi Sally, Beverly. Anna, and Rebecca. I love this method of making a flying geese, uh, making four flying geese at a time, as there's no waste. Can't waste fabric. Absolutely. 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 Never waste fabric. But it's also the speed as well. You do all your cutting and then suddenly magically you've got four. Yeah. It's a great method. I'm just dying to see how it works. So okay. I've got you sew two on and then you cut it. Then you sew the other two on. Yep. So that came out as two. I'll do, I'll do it again with this one so you can see it. So this is the other pair. Again, you want to line it up with the corner. You've got two minutes. Woo. Two minutes. It has flown by a bit. It has it flown has. by. Well, let me put that Liberty one back in that bundle or I'll get confused. The other thing I should say is mm. that um, I quilted <laughs> mine with a all over, like, um, what do you call it? I call it a checkerboard, but it's... Cross hatch. Cross hatch, yeah. yeah. Cross hatch all the way over. Um, and I did it after I'd appliqued on all the dress and plates but you could conceivably make it completely blank and put the Dresdens on afterwards. Oh, you could, yes. And then you wouldn't have all this issue of stopping and starting oh, at the true. edge. So you could put the little corner blocks in the squares, yep. join all the squares together, quilt the whole thing and then put it on afterwards. Yeah. yeah. I like that. It would make the quilting easier, wouldn't it? Yes, because, I mean, I. I don't, don't know how many times I started and stopped. Yeah. I mean, some people like to quilt the whole thing and would quilt over the Dresdens as well. But if you want, if you want them to stand out, yeah. it's better to sort of quilt around the edges of them. OK, so here's the other pair. Just take the pins out. And then you cut again along that pencil line. So do the ones, because your Dresdens have little points on, but you can get them with rounded. Do they have a different name if they're rounded? Oh, more like a flower shape? Yes. I don't know. I have seen them like that. I know mm. what you mean. I wonder if they have a different name. With a... I think they're still called Dresdens, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. There we go. That's magic. Now you've got four. Okay, so that's a quick way of making those because you're going to make so many. Brilliant. Yeah, I loved making it. I hope that people at home do as well. I'm sure they will. Well, if you go through the instructions, because I'm going through them as we're, as we're talking to Sally on this, pictures of the pinking shears. You can see there. So it, it does go <laughs> oh, through. Oh, I am a bit, I am a bit thorough. <laughs> I know, but it's great, isn't it? Because it makes sense. So when you say cut it with pinking shears, because you've put a photo, you know how close to yeah. cut it. But I love, I love visual patterns. And yes. Yeah. To be honest, I d if I can sort of follow just the pictures, I will mm. do. And I'll only resor resort to the text if I need to. Yeah, it does make it easier. Like it? Or just to it. double check that you're doing it right yeah. as well. Because so you can read all the words, but just to make sure that what you're doing is actually right, it's really worth it. Yeah. Well, that's lovely. Thank you very okay, much. You. So we will see you back at um, 10 with, yep, with the, the ruler, the Loon Star ruler. Mm, okay. All right. See, I will see you in a bit. So let me just go back through these. So the, the patterns on their own are sold out, so you can't have one of those, but you can have them in the bundle. The Liberty Bundle. We are down to six of these. Sorry, that's the motor bundle. When I say Liberty, that's the wrong one. Come on. Not concentrate. This is the Liberty bundle. This is it. So we are down to six of these. Now, in the Liberty bundle, you get Sally Ann's full instructions. It's the only way you can get hold of them now. There's 10 and a half metres of fabric in this for 129.99. Remember that because it's over 99.99, 99.99. You can buy it on split pay, so you pay two payments of 64.99, one now, one in a month's time. But we will send it to you straight away, and you don't have interest put on it. Now you will have lots of the Liberty left over, so you can make more than one quilt. Obviously, you will need more for the borders and the background, but there's plenty of Liberty here. You've got a half a meter each of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 half metres of Liberty, 
all from the same range so you know that the colours and prints go together. And as Sally Ann said earlier, they are different scales, which is lovely. So you've got this one, it's quite a big scale, against maybe this one, really much smaller, but it's nice to have that balance of scale. And you can see, because we've chosen fabrics all from the same collection, how all the colours are echoed throughout, so you know it's going to go together. So for £129.99, you can have your very own Liberty quilt and you get the full instructions and it's the only way you'll get them. You also get two metres of the pink fabric, which is used for the Dresden centres, the little squares and the borders and the binding. So there is enough of the binding here. And then you get two and a half metres of the ivory, which is used for the background. So all you, I mean, obviously, if you are going to make another quilt or a bigger quilt, you will need more of the background and the um, border fabric, but there is a lot of liberty there. Just use it for your own makes, or if you want to make matching cushions or you want to make another quilt, then you've got plenty there. So that's 10 and a half metres of fabric in total. The other bundle is the Moda bundle. And again, 10 and a half metres. And remember the instructions, and this is the only way you can get hold of the instructions now, is they come in the bundle. So, in our teens, so the Liberty's winning, but not by much. We are in our teens of this. So, again, 12 half metres of Moda fabric, all from the same, is it the Three Sisters? All from the Three Sisters range the daybreak range so you know that they all go together and again you have got the difference in scale of print so this is quite a large scale and then if we look at this one quite a small one and it's nice to use the two scales together because it adds a lot of balance to the quilt and interest it makes different ones stand out and different ones recede and that's what is lovely about it you can choose your own selection so if you wanted to have some dresden plates that were just the mustard color some with the teal color or just mix them all up it's up to you but you know it's your quilt you can do what you like with it so you get 12 half meters of the moda you get two meters of this lovely sort of deep gold color which is good because it coordinates with the navy in the bundle and the teal and the mustard and that's used for the borders and the center of the dresdens and the binding and then you get two and a half meters of white and that's used for the background so again there's more than enough fabric so if you want to make a bigger quilt you'll just need more of the white and of the gold fabric um, or make two quilts or use it for other makes but it is it's a really nice way you know that you've got more than enough here to make the quilt and this is the only way you'll get the instructions too and then the last thing is the thread because um, as Sally was saying you would need to applique the centers on and the Dresden plates on and by using an 80 weight thread it's finer than the 50 so it won't stand out as much because you want it to recede a bit so that the Dresdens and the centre stand out. In this collection you've got five reels and they're all neutral colours you can see and they've got cherry wood spool so those colours will go with any anything. They're lovely aren't they? Really really nice so you've got a mix of sort of white cream greys and like a khaki green but they will go with the colours on here so it's they're perfect for either hand or machine sewing but because it's slightly finer it it will just not stand out as much because you don't want the quilting around these to show them they're, they're merely for attaching they're for applique um anyway gosh i think we've actually run over time so i will be back with you in a couple of minutes for the next bird of the month it's march it's the bullfinch so i'll see you back here very very soon Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Miss the live show? 
Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. 
Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Welcome back to Sewing Street and it's Bird of the Month again. So we've now caught up. We've now caught up because we had to do um, February Bird of the Month in March because we couldn't get the stop. But we are now on the right time. So it's all back to normal, 22nd. We're always going to be about the third Monday in the month. I'll, we'll look at the day and I'll tell you when the next one is. Anyway, so on March. March and March is the bullfinch. Isn't he beautiful? Shall I show you the panel? We'll start off with that. Now let me see. Look at this. Look at this. I'll do it that way so you can see him. He's beautiful, isn't he? Stunning. He's got, I mean, I don't know a lot about bullfinches, but he's got the most beautiful, like, corally red coloured breast. If you know any facts about bullfinches, we've got any photos in the garden, do send them in because I'd love to know more about him. But he is a really stunning bird. He's on this lovely branch. What's lovely about the way that all of these bird of the months have been designed um, by the lovely Tom, who's designed them all. He, um, all the colours go together. So the quilt that's on the other set, we'll show you in a bit, but all of the colours in all of them, if you collect all 12 and make the quilt, they all blend together. So the colours that are used in the backgrounds and in all the sort of the foliage and the leaves and the birds, they go together really beautifully. So we have got the bullfinch. So on the panel you get, it measures 10 and a half by 10 and a half, but that's because there's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So finish size of 10 inch square. You've got two labels, which I've tried to use, which I have used in every project, but you can use them or not use them or use them for other things. And you get a choice of two colours. Then you have five complementary, with an E, as in not praising, but goes with, complementary um, stri fabric strips. They're two and a half inches wide, which is the normal design roll strip, and they're 43 inches long because the whole panel is wider than normal fabric. So they're basically design roll strips, 43 inches long, and they're all printed in colours that go with the panel. So you can buy just the panel and you can do whatever you like with it. You can keep it to make it into the quilt. So at the moment, we're whole fire we are trying to get at the moment all of the panels that you can buy separately have sold out before i even came on air but you can buy the panel in the kit with the instructions we are trying to get hold of some more of the panels on their own but just wait wait for one moment so at the moment if you want to buy the panel you need to buy it with the kit so with the kit 1999 you get the instructions which are here that um I have done via Amber Make, so I've written these. Um, now, this month, because the way that the instructions work, if you haven't seen Bird of the Month before, every month we will have a new bird. They're all exactly the same size. They've all got the same strips. They're just different birds and different colours. And all of the instructions will work with any of the birds. So this month I've made a cosmetic bag. Here it is. It's got a really lovely curved top, box bottom, little tassel zip and I'm going to show you how to make this as well and then the inside is fully lined as well so really useful so if you want the panel on its own we are trying today to get some more but we will let you know later so just I can't, I can't believe that they all the panels on their own have sold out before I even came on there. If you want the panel with the instructions, the whole kit, that's 19.99. you can buy that. And we are going to try and get more of the panels. Now, remember, the way that it works, so this month it's a cosmetic bag. But if you want to do one of the others, so if maybe you've got the Wren from January, but you want to make a cosmetic bag, you can use these instructions for that. Maybe you buy the panel, but you want to do, you want to make one of the other ones. So all the instructions, they are written in such a way that they work with any of the birds, if that makes sense. So this month is the cosmetic bag. So in the instructions, the picture of it, you've got all the instructions you need, um, photographs of walkthrough and the template because it's quite a specific curve and it's got markings, it's got a box bottom and it's important. So I've put the template in, it's full size, 
no, no, no need to enlarge it or anything. You just have a fold and I'll talk you through in a minute how to create it. And I'm going to show you how to put the zip on and how to cut your fabric out and all, all the different stages there. So if you've never tried putting a, a zip in a line bag before, this is a really good way to start. So although it's on a curve, you've never, oh, I've never done the curve before, easy peasy, you just need to know how to do it. So in this kit, you get the panel and the instructions and all the instructions work with all of the birds. So that is March. And now just bear with us. We are trying to get hold of more bullfinches on their own, but we will let you know later. Just didn't think they'd all sell out already. Nice, glad you like the birds because they're so lovely, aren't they? So that's the kit, $19.99 for the bullfinch. That's instructions and panel. Now, I'm just going to go back. We promised that every month, if this is the first time you've seen it, and maybe you haven't bought January and you haven't bought February, but you want to make the quilt. I'll show you that in a minute because that's on the other set. Um, if you want to buy, oh, there's the quilt now. There you go. So we joined together all the birds and then we've had it quilted. And that's what, if you buy all of the panels, at the very end in December, we will be selling a panel that has all the borders and the little squares. So you've got the borders and the sashing and you can make a quilt exactly like that. But it's nice as well that you can see what it looks like. Now, last month in February, we had the pigeon. Now we had a bit of pigeon controversy. I have to say there was, we were a bit divided some people love pigeons, but a lot of you hated pigeons. So we brought in an extra one. So for February, this is the pigeon panel. And I love the pigeon panel because I quite like pigeons. And this is a beautiful one. So the panel, this is the panel on its own, 9 99 You get the pigeon, 10 and a half inches square. Again, you get the four the two and a half by 43 inches, five coordination strips, all in the same fabrics. You can use that for your own makes or you can make what I did because we've got the instructions as well. So that's the pigeon. Now, there were a few of you who didn't like pigeons. So we listened and we gave you another one. So we're now up to 13 birds. So you can, you can have 13 birds or you can choose the ones you want you could have a whole quilt full of all of the same ones so this was the replacement this was the alternative bird is the owl so this is the owl panel that's on screen at the moment 9.99 he's on a really deep like kingfisher blue like that really deep teal blue background he's quite stunning but the cut the panels have been designed using colorways so that they all go together and those are all the coordinating strips that go with it so that was February, owl or pigeon, but you could make a quilt that was all pigeons. Just buy 12 of them. Just choose your favourites. Now, when we did when we did last month, let me just move that panel out of the way. I made, obviously from the pigeon, a messenger bag. Messenger pigeon. Fully lined. Fully lined. And you can see that the coordinating strips I used for the back and the front of it. So you only needed to buy, I think, half a metre fabric to make the whole bag, because everything was on the panel. And that's that's what it looks like in a pigeon. So that, if you want to buy the pigeon panel and the instructions, which are here, to make the messenger bag, that's on screen at the moment. So, but if you want to just buy the instructions on their own of the messenger bag, and remember the instructions will work with any of the birds, any, we're up to 13 now, any of the 13 birds, these instructions will work. So if you want to make a bullfinch messenger bag, you can buy the bullfinch panel when we get it, and you can buy these instructions. Some people are coll collecting all the instructions because then they're going to use it. And there was a lovely lady on our Facebook fan page the other day who'd already made the owl and the wren from January into the cushion that was using the instructions from January. They looked amazing together. So a lot of mix and match. So if you want to buy the pigeon panel and the instructions, that's on the screen. Now, if I also made the owl into a messenger bag as well, so just so you could see what it looked like. Again, and then that has the um, that has the part of the coordinating strips, and I put barn out. You know, I put the label on the back of it. So that is the owl panel made into the messenger bag. So if you want to buy um, the owl panel with the instructions, that's on screen. No, it's, no, we've just got the owl panel. And then the instructions are separate. But you can buy them, but you can buy them together. 
if you scroll down on the website, all of these options, if I've, oh, you have to buy these separate. So if you want to buy the owl panel and you want the messenger bag instructions, they are separate. But honestly, if you go down on the website, it's all detailed there. If I've really confused you, it's all there. So that's messenger bag instructions, owl panel, pigeon panel. Going back further, this is going to get really complicated when we hit like October, isn't it? I don't know how we're going to do it. So January was the wren. So you can buy the wren panel on its own, which I haven't got a wren panel, but this is what it looks like. And then I made it into a cushion, but you can see what the colour of all, because I used the whole the whole panel for this because it had these lovely sort of taupe stripes on. So we'll show you a picture of the panel on its own. That's what it looks like. Um, so you get the wren and then all the coordination strips. So if you want just the panel, that's on screen at the moment, $9.99. Okay. But if you want the instructions and the panel together for the patchwork star cushion, that's on screen at the moment. So that's just the, the panel and the instructions together, eighteen ninety nine. But if you want just the instructions, so if you want to make the Patrick Star cushion, so say for example you want to make the bullfinch as a cushion, you know that we've said it, I've said it again, that all the instructions work with all of the panels, so you can buy just the Patrick Star instructions cushion instructions which includes everything you need to know all the cutting out all the extra fabric or maybe in December you want to make a robin cushion if you've got these instructions it will work with them or um, great blue tit April if you wanted to make a cushion for the conservatory then that will work that will work later that's April that's the next one or maybe you want to make a starling that's in June and you wanted to make that into a cushion. So you could just collect all the instructions, but the way that I've written them as well is that if you want to use the instructions for your own fabric, all the measurements are in there, okay? So let's go, so now we've done all what happened in the past, but you know, you can, remember, you can use your own fabric for these instructions because I have put the measurements in. It does tell you what you need to do. So if you want to make your own, you can. But today, today, bullfinch. No? I have not lost it. Hannah says, you've lost it under the pile. I have not. I knew exactly where it was. So for the panel and the instructions, we are working on getting more of the panel on its own. It's just that we sold out before the hour's up. So we are currently speaking to the suppliers. But at the moment, if you want to buy the bullfinch panel, which looks like this, this is the bullfinch panel. lot of unfolding there he is in the next um well no not the next hour 11 o'clock we're doing embroidery so you could these would be lovely in fact i might do when i get a bit further down the year i might do a bit of embroidery on them as well because i think they would embellish beautifully so bullfinch panel with all of the coordinating stripes and the instructions to make the cosmetic bag like here look at that it's like it's the same thing magic with pictures, pictures of, and all these, so remember you can use the instructions for other things. So if you wanted to make this cosmetic bag in other fabrics, all the measurements are there. And because I've put the template in as well, so you can use that for lots and lots of things. All the seam allowances are included as well. So you can use them for the panel. When you've done with that, you've then got the instructions. So if you just want to buy the instructions to do it with your own fabric, then you can. Um, you can buy two of each panel, so you've got one for the quilt, one to make the, the projects, because some people don't want to make the whole quilt, so we thought it was probably better to show you what you could do with each one. And then at the end of the year, you've got 12 ideas. So I think, I think that's explained, I think that's explained all the different bundles. But if I've confused you, which I'll probably have, then just um, scroll down on the website and, and all of the different options of instructions, panels, instructions with panels, owls and pigeons and everything. It's all on the website because I probably have confused you. So I'm going to just move to the other set where the sewing machine is so I can show you how to do it. One moment. There we go. As if by magic, I have moved now. 
Ta -da! there we go so now you can see the full quilt so we've got the january wren the february pigeon but you could have an owl instead and the march bullfinch that we're doing at the moment and obviously then we'll go through the months that's i've just finished april i might just give you a little sneak peek later and then we've got the great hit in may the starling in june and goes all the way down to the robin and then at the very end of the year, we will be selling a panel that does all the borders and the squares and the sashing and everything and the binding as well so that you can make an identical one. But obviously you do have to buy them all. We are going to aim to get in stock every month that you can buy the others in case you've missed them. But the good thing is, is if you um, if you collect them as you go along, you'll be fine. So far we might have them, but somehow we've sold out. Obviously the birds are becoming more popular as we go along because the people just love the birds. So where we start is to make this cosmetic bag. What I've tried to do with every set of instructions is um, use as much of the coordinating strips as I can so that you don't have to buy extra. With some projects, obviously, you need to buy extra fabric. But with this one, the only extra thing you need is the zip because the panel in itself that has given me enough fabric to do the back of the bag and also, I put some bubble wrap in to fill it up, but the lining is using the coordinating strips as well. So the only thing you need to buy for this is a zip, which makes it nice and easy. So where you start is, first of all, open up your instructions. You need to trace off the template. Um, I've cut it in half so that it fits, but it says fold. So what I would do is take um, a piece of grease proof paper or tracing paper if you have it and just trace around it and trace the fold line and then flip it over and trace the other side and you will end up with a pattern like this. Except mine's in paper because this is my original one, so it's got a few lines on it and a test square to make sure that we got the right size. So you will end up with a pattern that looks like that because that is half of that and it doesn't matter whether it's in tracing paper or not. Then what you need to do is cut out your bird. Now, I've been quite specific in my instructions about where you place this template so that it's in the right position because the template is exactly the same width as the fabric square, but it's a little bit shorter. So if you're going to use these instructions for a different bird, if you've used tracing paper, it's probably better because then you can centre it. Um, from the top to bottom or but what I did I think it's an inch and a something maybe an inch and a half up from the bottom so you just place that on top and cut around it I've done it already and you do that for that and you also cut exactly the same out now the coordinating strips are all printed together so I haven't cut them out at all I just placed it on top and then you immediately get that stripe effect and you need to cut three of those one for the f back and two for the lining so that's really simple and then immediate so that's the great thing about having the instructions is that template is there if you ever want to make another one you've got it because it's already got the box corners cut in it and the curve once you've cut it out it's very important to mark the zip ends on the template there is zip end very important to mark those on to it i've just used pencil you could use like a heat erasable pen put it on with a pin but do mark them on then put it all to one side and the next thing you need to do is make the zip gusset. So the way this works, if you look at it, you've got fabric at the bottom of the zip that's the same width as the actual zip and that just provides that extra gusset because if you put the zip, you don't really want the zip going right to the bottom because if you unzip it all, all your stuff will fall out. You only want it going to there. And if you didn't have the gusset bit, you would end up with a really messy seam. So by putting that extra little gusset in and there's enough fabric on your panel to cut it from that. So again, that's the only thing you need to buy is the zip. Um, we do have the zips available on the website. If you scroll down, you will see exactly the right length of zip you need. We've got them in grey and in cream because you need at least a 16 inch, 40 centimetre zip. Um, better if it's a little bit longer because then you can cut it down to size. So that just is just a technique so that you're when you open it up, it doesn't everything doesn't fall out, but it gives you a really nice neat finish. Now it's very easy to do. I've got a blue zip here just so you can see. Now you cut four pieces of fabric to the measurements given in the instructions. I used two for the 
outer that's because the zip gusset is lined because the bag is lined because you don't want the bag to be lined and then the zip not to be lined because it would look messy so you've got two fabrics for the outer and two fabrics for the lining so you need two of them for the minute now most zips if they're these nylon zips just have a plastic an end that this is a closed zip have a plastic end on them or they might have a metal end but either way you don't really want to sew through that because it's quite solid so you take the one that you're going to have on the outer and place it right sides together with your zip but a little bit of the way down from either the metal or the plastic end because you really don't want to um, sew through that. This is why having your zip a little bit longer helps but the, the size that I've given you in the instructions is fine. Now I'm going to, if you haven't done zips before, you're going to sew this like a sandwich but if you haven't um, done a zip before then let's do it stage by stage because it's easy if you tack this into place first so so put them so put them right sides together and I'm going to put a pin either side this is just because I want you to see how to do this so it's easy for you now to tack it into place we're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance so you can either tack that by hand or if you want to use your machine that's fine but do it within the seam allowance so less than quarter of an inch so i just do it a tiny little bit like an eighth of an inch right oh god <laughs> that was a bit of a bang wasn't it i, I might have i did a bit more gently now this is just a oh been over it super fast when you go over the teeth they are nylon so you can sew over them but just take it a bit slowly because if you catch the teeth at a, even the slightest angle, you can end up breaking your needle. So go a bit slowly, unlike what I just did. Right, that all that is doing is tacking it in place, and it just if you are if you haven't um, done these zip ends before, it just makes it a little bit easier because it will stay still. Right now, this is the lining piece. So place that right sides together with the outer piece so that your zip is sandwiched in between. You haven't got to worry now about the zip being straight because you want the zip at an exact right angle to this otherwise your zip will look a bit wonky. Because you've tacked it into place you don't need to worry. So now you can sew it into place using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So just use the markings on your sewing machine. Now you'll notice that at the moment this gusset is wider than the actual zip. That's because it's easier to sew it wider and then later on cut it down to size. Because you haven't then got to match up edges. It gives you a bit of margin for error. So using your quarter of an inch seam allowance, go a bit more slowly over the teeth just in case you catch it. If you're using a metal zip, then you won't be able to sew over them. So what you do is you just lift the foot and ease over them. Okay. So now we have the zip gusset. So you open them out like this and you can see how that looks now like the edge of this bag. Ooh, trying to angle it. <laughs> that's really weird trying to do it the other way around so it looks like the end of this bag now that's the zip gusset section there so you can press that open if you like to hold all of this into place and also to give it a little neat edge it's nice to top stitch along there so you can press it it's probably better to press it but just for speed top stitch which top stitch is just a line of decorative stitching that's worked on the top of the fabric usually about two or three mils in from the edge you can do it more or less but when people say top stitching it's usually sort of two or three mils an eighth uh, a six sort of an eighth sixteenth of an inch away from the edge it's a decorative line of stitching but it's also used to hold things in place so if you just sew i think i've said it super tortoise i need to go a little bit faster And now you've got a nice zip gusset that's exactly the right length and easy. What you then do is cut it so it's exactly the same width as the zip tape. You can do that afterwards. Now, 
That's easy, that end, because you know that's all done, but you've got to measure the next end. This is where it's really important. Now, you need to move the zip slider, and I have done this before where I've cut it off and the slider's down there. That's very annoying. So do move the zip slider out of the way. Now, in the instructions, it tells you how much space you need for the zip teeth, which I think is 15 and a half inches. I'm just going to check why I, that I am actually right in that. Yes. So, with your tape measure, measure from one end. Let me move that across so you can see. One end of the gusset. Let me just move the machine out of the way now because I want you to be able to see this. Now, if you're doing this at home, do it on your iron. Actually, I'll get my ironing mat and I'll show you. This is how my ironing board is always my work surface is what I do because it's important that this measurement is exact because then it will fit nicely. So hold the zip open and then measure your 15 and a half inches. It's 15 and a half because I've worked it out how much space you need to go around your curve. If you're doing this for something you want, you just need to work out what your measurement is. But for this, it has to be 15 and a half inches. Measure 15 and a half inches and put a pin in and push it through into your ironing board. Fantastic work surface that because it holds it all night. It holds it in. I use mine all the time as a pin board. So if you measure 15 and a half inches, you can see that's held nice and stable now. That is the exact measurement you need. Then undo your zip and you and that will stay. And it's much easier to measure a zip when it's together. So this is something that you you know you can use this skill because what I try I've tried to do with each set of instructions that over the twelve months you'll learn some new skills. So we learned a bit of um, piecing in the first month. We did bag making last month. This time we're doing zips and zips on a curve. So this is where the seam of this need of the next end needs to go. It's not where the edge of the fabric goes. It's where the seam. So what you can do if you get a pen. I haven't got a pen on this side or a pencil. Oh, I thought I'd have a pencil. Well, if you mark with a pencil the quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm just going to guess for now, um, on here, you can then line up those pin marks because you know those are your 15 and a half inches with there and that's the line that you sew along. So keep the zip held together because you need those teeth to be just like they are. Put the outer fabric right sides down. I mean, all this is in instructions. You haven't got to remember this. And then I always pin one side and then pin the other side. If you place them horizontally like this, just pin the zip tape on. You can then take out those pins that are holding it into place. And now your end is exactly the right place. If you've marked your quarter of an inch seam allowance, um, it's in exactly the right place and it's all held together. So use your ironing board. It's like the best work surface. And then sew a quarter of an inch. Oh, take the pin out if you can. Whoa. Right. and then take out the next pin. But you see now your zip is held together because otherwise if you don't do that, you'll end up with a, too much of a gap. So you can either tack that by hand or machine stitch it. Put the other one right sides together with it. Pin the horizontally. I know this might look like this is a bit time consuming, but you will get a really neat zip by putting ends in. Sometimes when you see when people insert zips, if they don't put ends in, you get a bit of a sort of a gla gathered pleated bit that looks really not neat. So this is a really good way. You can use this even, it doesn't need to be a curved, even if you're just doing a flat edge. Maybe you're doing a zip in the top of a purse. This is a really good technique for it. So open these out. and then top stitch it. What you can do at this stage is trim the zip. So if you open it up, cut the zip across there and then fold it back down because you don't want all of the rest of this bulk. It depends how long a zip you've bought. I've got a, 
a zip that's way longer than I need, but I tend to buy lots of long zips and then I can cut them down. Um, and then just top stitch in the same way as we did before, all the way across. And now you've got a perfectly inserted zip and you know that that measurement is exact and it will fit. So what you do next is you trim down the sides of here. I'll show you with one of them so that it's exactly the same width, but I have done one in advance. So you just cut it. I usually do this with my rotary cutter and ruler and I press the rotary cutter. But if you haven't got a rotary cutter, just trim down one side and then measure. Measure to make sure so that when you're going to, that it's the same width all the way along. So you can measure that's two and a half centimetres, measure two and a half centimetres and draw it on. I'm just doing it quickly. And then tack that together all the way around, only because it's easier than when you insert it to hold them together. So that's the outside of the zip and that's the lining. And if I show you on here, this is what it will look like. That's that gusset piece and you can see on the inside that that's lined and now your zip will fit so take a bit of time to get that right and do the other end as well and then that's your zip finished now what you need to do is attach the zip to the front of the bag and then the back of the bag now I've done one side in advance only because I haven't got won't have time on air to do the whole thing and I wanted to show you one side so you sew one side and the lining, the front and the lining to one side of the zip and the back and the line to the other. So I've done one of them already, but I'm going to show you the other one. So if you take the front of your bag, mark the top centre of it, all you have to do is fold it in half, make a little crease, and then I put a little pencil line, or you could put a pin. And do that with the lining piece as well. So obviously I've marked them. I've also marked, as I said to you before, mark the... Um, zip end marks on both pieces because those are important <laughs> and then with your zip before you put it together fold that in half matching up the ends of these um, zip ends and then mark the center of the zip tape just with a pin because it's not as unless you you might be able to mark it with pencil now this zip has now got to go around the curve so the curve that's curved but the zip is straight. So to help it to curve, I put little snips in the zip tape. Now we're gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance for this, so these zips need to be not as long as that. So just a, tight, a little bit shy of quarter of an inch. But can you see, can you see those? That there are little snips. We're gonna get in a bit closer than you can see. You can see that they're not very long. They're spaced about half an inch-ish didn't measure it apart but you just make those little snips and that's what helps it to curve around the edge so you'll start off with one side it's just because I've done one already place the um, zip which is the teeth edge right sides together with the front and then match up the bottom of the zip tape this is the great thing about having a template is all the measurements have been done for you Ma match up the bottom of the template and pin that in place now, if you've followed the measurements properly, the top, the end of the um, zip tab will match that mark. So the best thing to do, just to be in case you don't slide wrong, is this is the most important thing, is if the end of the, um, the zip tab matches that mark, then you can be sure that that 15 and a half inches worth of zip teeth will fit. So pin that one in place. Match the centre mark that you've put on your zip with the centre mark that you've put on your front and pin those. If you're pinning on a curve, it's best to pin vertically because it will curve more. Mm. Right, so if you want to buy the instructions just for the cosmetic bag and because you've got another bird, they are available on the web. So if you on um, if you scroll down, you'll be able to see them. So if you think there they are, nine ninety nine. So if you want to make this cosmetic bag, but with a different panel, say a pigeon, pigeon bag, or a wren bag, or you want to save it because you've got your eye on the starling bag later, um, for example. 
then the, those are the instructions now. So now we're, we've pinned that end to that mark and that end there in the centre. So that's easy, isn't it? We've all, it's all measured. We know it's all going to work. And now you've just got to pin the zip to here. Now, because you've got to match the exact, the exact raw edge of the fabric to the edge of the zip tape. So what I do is I just sort of pin it roughly to it because it depends how much that you've you've got to open the curve. So I just sort of pin it roughly all the way around to see whether I need to stretch it a little bit more in one place. But actually, look, that fits really well. Look at that. And that's because of doing it in halves. If you didn't do it in halves, it probably wouldn't fit as well. So with this, you can, because it's quite a shallow curve, you can pin horizontally. If you're pinning something, particularly say you're pinning around a circle where it's got a tight curve, then pin vertically because you've, you, you've got more points then to pin and you can um, move it round more. So if you'd put a vertical pin there and a vertical pin there, you can then angle it more open. But with this, you don't really need to do that. And then from there, carry on pinning all the way around. Now, with we're going to do exactly the same that we did with those zip gussets, is we're going to sandwich it. And again, I find if you try to sew the sandwich together, you can, you can decide you don't, whether the, you can decide when you pin it whether your zip is open or closed. I find it easier the zip's closed, but it really doesn't matter. So because we're going to make a sandwich, I find when you're trying to sew through three layers together, particularly when you've got a zip tape involved, which is a little bit more slippery, they tend to separate and then you'll end up with that zip not right on the edge. So tack it into place first and you can do that by machine so what you need to do is change to a zip foot which i have in here oh this machine is the 560 if you oh and we've only got one left but if you want a really really nice machine this isn't like the sort of top of the range super duper but it's a really good I mean, you know, we always say this is good for the next level, but actually this is a really good machine for beginners because it's a good quality, it'll last. And if you just, oh, why can't I get that in? If you've just started to sew, you will find within a few months that you'll need something a bit better. If you can get your foot in. I did this earlier really easily. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. So I'm going to tack this into place. And remember, tacking means sewing within the seam allowance, or you can hand tack it if you haven't done it before. So you won't have to take this out because I'm doing this within the seam allowance. But if you're, if you're tacking it by hand, then um, you will have to take it out. So if you see, I'm sewing really close. This is why you need the zip foot, because you can't sew this close to the edge because the foot starts smacking the zip and then it makes your seam allowance jump over. So by having a zip foot, it's a much, it's like half the width of a normal foot. And so you haven't got the zip teeth in its way, which then if you try, if the zip teeth are in the way, it starts moving the foot and then you can't sew it. So I know a lot of people are really scared of sewing in zips, but this is not too difficult, is it? Because we've done all the pinning, we put the zip foot on, and by doing it in stages, it's a bit easier. But if you if you think, oh, I don't want to do that really narrow seam, then just get a needle and thread and hand tack it into place. Because I've got a very narrow seam. I mean, I'm only doing it like a sixteenth of an inch by from the edge because I don't want to have to take out this sewing later, and I don't want it to be seen. So it's e just easy if you do it. But you can see how because I've clipped the zip tape. It's um, curving really nicely. Just take care when you do clip the zip tape that you make sure you clip it to less than the seam allowance, otherwise some of those little snips will end up being shown. But that works with, with zip tapes or for, you know, sewing any curve. Ooh, a bit fiddly because I've got to get all the, take all the pins out. Now, when you get to the, um, <coughs> the slider, keep the needle down and lift the foot and then just move, go reach inside and move the zip slider out of the way and put the foot back down and then you can carry on. Okay. 
because at some point you will have to move it. But remember to tack all the way down to the end of the zip gussets as well. All the way down to the end, right. So now we've tacked that. That's all in, held in place. So now we take the lining piece where we've marked the top centre and also mark those lines. That just helps with, with positioning. So right sides together, so you've got the right side of the front, the right side of the lining, the zip sandwiched together. Match those centre top seams, which you've marked already, and pin them. Turn it round. Match the... Um, get some pins. Match the mark that you, the zip end mark on there with the end of that zip end and pin it together. And then that will match beautifully as well. But it's just having all of these points of matching, although it will fit. Do the other end as well first. Although it will fit because you cut it from a template, it just means that if your seam allowance is out slightly, you've got points of reference. Oh, somebody just asked, did I use an interface because their partner was talking? Talking? I, I hate that. I was, people walk into my living room and I go, shh, shh, and then they just like sidle out. Um, no, I didn't use an interfacing um, just because the fabric is, re is a reasonably good weight. It's a pure cotton, but it has, it's reasonably nice weight. I didn't feel it needed it, but honestly, if you want to add an interfacing or a wadding, would be really nice. Or you could use instead maybe a waterproof lining. It works well. Shower curtains are very good for that, cheap ones. But um, I didn't use an interfacing because it is actually quite a, a nicely printed fabric, but you could, but wadding is lovely as well to give it a bit of substance. If you are going to use wadding, then press or tack that to the wrong side of the outer fabric first. You can do outer or lining. I prefer outer because I like the body more to be on the outside, but th that's entirely up to you. But I didn't use an interfacing. Some fabrics are a bit light and you need to. Oh, and Trisha's asked what my angel policy. My angel policy is fine, as long as you don't make thousands of them. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, yeah, I, in fact, that's really weird. We were talking about that. Um, over Sunday dinner yesterday. I told the kids, I said, that'll come up in a pub quiz one day. I don't know why we were talking about angel policy, but angel, but angel policy is, is basically, so um, you can't sell the panels, you can't sell the instructions, because there's copyright on that, that belongs to um, Amber Make, so you can't sell those. However, if you want to make some of these bags and sell them, that's fine. As long as you don't go into industrial business and make millions out of it and then just give me a call <laughs> and I'll come and share in it. But no, that's my angel policy is, yeah, if you want to make these, that's absolutely fine because it's a finished make. But please do not give or sell the instructions. They take, honestly, you wouldn't believe how long they take to make and create and draw the sa work out the sample. And I had to make loads of these to get the zip exactly the right length. I didn't want to say, right, cut your zip to 15 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. I wanted it to be more. So it does take time to do and to think about. So I'd rather you didn't give the instructions to other people or copy them. But if you want to make them for charity, now, hopefully that will come up in a pub quiz one day. What's well, an angel policy? Right. But these, this is quite a good gift. I'm just opening it up so I can move the slider around a bit. There we go. So now I've got the lining pinned to the outer all the way around. So with the zip foot and a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm now going to sew it into place. That's a quarter there. Just use your, um, the markings on your foot plate to get the quarter of an inch. If you're new to this and you're not sure, and you because it is important you do a quarter of an inch, I'm going to just move my pedal, um, then draw the seam allowance onto your fabric. Heat erasable pens are brilliant for that, friction pens that we sell. They are brilliant for that because, you know, everybody started sewing somewhere. It takes a while to be able to so straight or to be able to follow a seam allowance so just draw it on so this is really as long as you've got a, a um, zip foot on then you're not going to be smacking the zip so it won't move it out of the way and because you've done all that tacking in advance 
you've done all the prep. This I try to write the instructions so that there's so that people feel a bit more confident about zips. If, as long as you do the preparation, it's fine. Now I've moved the zip slider right to the other end so that I can concentrate on doing all of this and not worry about it. And then when I get to the end, I will. So just remember where you've put it because if you get to the zip slider, you won't be able to sew past it because it's that little bit wider and it'll throw your seam off. And that's fine. You, if you do that, you just undo it and then move the zip slider again. So make sure you keep the, um, all the three layers together, which is why it's better to sew the outside one on first. So I'm about to get to the zip slider. So again, put, make sure the needle's down, lift the foot up, and then you have to reach, go right inside and get hold of it and move it out of the way. But if you really don't want to do that, you can actually, let me just show you a different way. You can just take it out and cut it off. Move this slide if you know, because you can reach inside and do it, but if you find that a bit fiddly, just, you see I'm just moving the slide around. Now I can just go back, just start stitching on top of the previous stitches by just a little bit. Do a little reverse stitch and now you can carry on. That's just, ooh. <laughs> That's good. You can carry on if you actually. I don't know what I was looking. Don't don't sew and look at something else. I was. <laughs> I don't know what I was looking at there. Just went off, but that's fine. I'm just sewing back over it. And then you just sew right down to the end. And the reverse stitch at the end. Now, I <laughs> hope this is right. <laughs> I've done this before and it's not been. Um, <laughs> yeah, good to know, good to know. So I'm going to turn it right sides out now. Yay. <laughs> I'm trying to think when it was I did it. I think I did it on air with John, did a zip and turned it right sides out and I turned it the wrong way around. Anyway, so look, now I've got my zip. When, you're, when you do it, if you, I'll do it like this. Now we've got a really nice, neat curve zip. There's the front, there's the back. It wasn't really difficult. It was just the prep involved in it. What I would do now, I'm not gonna do it because I want to show you the box. Oh God, I've nearly run out of time. Um, I want to show you the box corners, but um, press it really so the seam is right on the edge. And then let me show you on this one. Then I did a line of top stitching around the edge. You don't have to do that, but it just gives you a neater finish. And then I went across the bottom of the gusset and up the other side. And that just holds the lining and the outer together more. Because if you look at the inside, you can see it there. Um, it holds it, it together a little bit better and neatens it. But if you, if you don't want to do top stitching, you really don't need to. So that's the zip. Now you've got all these funny bottom corners, haven't you? So what you need to do now is open it out and you need to sew the outer, so the outer front and the outer back together. You'll have to sort of fold it all inwards to do that. So take the two outers, give it a shake, get some pins, um, and so pin them together all the way across the bottom. And then sew that, which, so actually I'm going to take that off because I don't need the zip foot anymore. You can keep the zip foot on, but I find it, I prefer to, there's more pressure on it. So I prefer to sew without the zip, with, with a normal zip. Because it just puts more pressure and it's easier to keep your seam nice and even. Make sure, as you're going along, that you don't sew through part of the lining while you're doing this. Just sort of feel out underneath every now and then. And you know I'm telling you that because I've done that, don't you? Because that's quite annoying. Right, now we're going to sew the two linings together. 
those are the two bits that are left over. Pin them together. Oh, I've got some pins here. But this time, so pin it together all the way along. But we're going to have to turn this right side out at some point, And you need a hole to do that. So because I quite often forget to leave a hole, what I do is I put some vertical pins in and then I remember. It does say in the instructions how much of a gap to leave and I can't remember what it is, but I worked it out. But it does tell you. It does tell you how much, but I, I don't know. It's about eight centimetres, I think. It doesn't really matter. I always try it and then realise if I can't open it, then I make the hole a little bit bigger and then I write it down so that you know. So when you get to where you've put your vertical, um, your vertical pin, just back reverse stitch a bit to hold that secure. I quite often forget to do this and then I go to turn it right sides out and then I have to get my seam ripper out and undo the seam, which is quite annoying. So try and remember to do that. It is in the instructions. So. Right, so sew all the way to the end. Okay. So now we've joined the bottom together the, of the bag, but we need to make the box corners, which look like this. Those are the box corners. So to do that, now I I don't know how I'd sort of discovered this while I was doing it, because normally when you do box corners in a bag, you do the outers and you do the linings. But because of the shape of this bag, you can do it all together. So, what, I, and I've no idea why it just sort of works. So you get, at this stage, it's hard to see what's the outer and the lining and it actually doesn't matter. So let's take one corner, let me show you it flat so you can see what it looks like because otherwise it gets all a bit confusing. So that's what the bag looks like. There's the curve. We've got the two linings. We've got the lining sewn together with the hole. We've got the outers sewn together with the hole. Take these corners and open the outers up like this so that the, the inner part of the corners, this part, the in part, is open. I've put, fo in the instructions, I've put photos into this, so it's really easy to see. And then this, the seam, the base seam, is lined up. It's across the centre of the zip gusset. But if you open the corners like that, it will be anyway. Just put a couple of pin, just pin that across there. So now normally what you would do is you would sew these, the outers and then the linings, but actually, because of the way that this works with the gusset, you can do this all in one go. So open up the lining, make sure that the centre space seam is lined up in the centre of the gusset, which it will be if you hold those corners, and then put these, the outer ones, on top. So now what we've got is we've got sandwiched together the outer and the lining. So we've got four layers together all in one. When you read the instructions and you see the photos, this will all make perfect sense. And then you just sew across. Let me take the pins out as we go all the way across this corner. So the good thing about having the template is that all that these this gusset, this box corners are already marked on it, so you haven't got to work out the measurements. Right, then you do the other one in exactly the same way, but I am running out of time, so I'm not going to do that. Do the other one in exactly the same way, and then you can turn it right sides out through the gap you left in the lining. <laughs> the gap was probably a bit bigger than that. So turn it all right sides out. So. Right, there we go. So if we now look at the corner that I have done, if you push it out, you can see now that we've got that box corner. And then if you look on the side and the lining, it's all sewn together in the lining as well. And normally with a bag you do them separately, but because of the 
the gusset and everything, it just works. And I sort of, did, I, I spent there's lots of people going, oh, of course you do that. But I sort of discovered it by accident. I thought, well, what will happen if I sew those together? And then obviously, so you've now got that really neat box corner and it's, and it's there as well. So you would do the other side the same, obviously, turn it all inside out. And then the only thing you have to do then is um, slip stitch the lining up and there's your cosmetic, cosmetic bag finished. If you want to put the bird label on the back, which I did, um, sew that on before you assemble the whole bag. It's, you know, only because it's just a bit easier. But you could put it on the front if you want. You don't have to put it on at all, put it on the base. But that's what that's how it works. And then what I did is I made a little tassel to go on the end of the zip. All you need for that, piece of cardboard, two balls of wool. And I we sell lots of wool on the Yarn Lane website. Um, I just chose yarn that went with the colours of the bird, wrapped it, wrap it round and round the card, cut off the ends, tie it together, and then you've got a tassel, just if you want one. So that is how to make a curved cosmetic bag. But if you buy the instructions or all the pictures, because there's a photo, as I said to you before, there's a photo of that section of doing the box corner really close up. So And all the instructions are there. So if you can't remember how I did it and how it worked, it will make sense while you're doing it. So I'm just... Right, so I'm just going to recap. Can I just go and get my bundle? One moment. Right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. So, just to recap, if you want, we are still we are still trying to get more of the bullfinch only um, bullfinch only panels. By the end of the show today, we will let you know. We're just still trying to sort it out. But if you want to buy the bullfinch panel, it is ava still available with the instructions for the cosmetic bag. And remember that the instructions will work with any of the panels. So if you buy this pack, you can use that for all of them. You can end up with 12 cosmetic bags, all with a different bird on. So for 19.99, the instructions and that. Um, now, what date are we back with April? I think it's the 20 something, 20, it's a Monday. And it's the 20 something, so it must be the week before. It's about the third week, third Monday. Is it on the schedule? I should remember that, shouldn't I? But I think it's, it's the 20 something, and I can't remember. Anyway, it's about, the, it's about, it'll be four weeks time. 26th, so April the 26th is when we're doing April blue tit. Just give you a little sneak, sneak preview. So this is what the blue tit looks like on the um, quilt. And then this is what I've made. This is April. So he's a little birdhouse peg bag. And then the bird, and then the blue tit comes through the panel, comes. And you, but you could do them with any. I just chose to do them for April because I sort of feel blue tits and peg bags sort of go together. So the peg bag um, is a birdhouse and I've obviously used all of the coordination strips for it. There is a one colour, you need ha like half a metre of fabric and that's it. And I've even used one of those coat hangers that you get with dry cleaners because I didn't want you to have to use a coat hanger of a specific shape that you wouldn't be able to get hold of. So if you want to make next month a little blue tit birdhouse peg bag, that's what's coming up. Sneak preview to April the 26th. I'll put him away. Anyway, I think we've run out of time by miles, but at least you know how to make a cosmetic bag. So just stay with us. And as soon as I know about getting more of the um, bullfinch only panels, we will let you know during the show. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes time with Sally Ann, who's going to do a fantastic Creative Grids masterclass for the Lone Star Ruler. <laughs> Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. 
We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Hi, my name is Yvonne McAtamney. My passion is patchwork and quilting. And it's also my privilege to own Village Fabrics, patchwork and quilting shop in Wallingford. Um, my sewing life began whenever, before probably I, before I went to school, certainly, and probably before I could uh, read. Uh, my mum was always a sewer and with two big sisters, we would, every weekend there would be a new dress made and I was allowed to do certain pieces. And as I got older, I started to make some dresses. My top tip is you don't have to be able to draw to design. The place that I always start is with a children's colouring in book. They have good bold outlines and then you can trace that and adapt to your heart's content. Anybody can do it. My claim to fame is that last year, when things were good, we had Jenny Doan from Missouri Star Quilt Company come and do a meet and greet at my shop in Wallingford. We had a really enjoyable day and good fun was had by all. So I hope I'll be popping into your living rooms on a regular basis as we go forward with Sewing Street here. We are intending to bring you some absolute beginner kits as well as some of our more intricate designs. See you soon. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. And welcome back to Sewing Street. So this is a real um, masterclass, masterclass of the diamond and lone star ruler. So you know creative grids do loads and loads of different rulers and then you see them all and you think, I wonder what they do and what they're good for. Once you discover that, it's fantastic. We did the Dresden plate ruler the other week. Amazing, didn't even know it could do all those things. So we've given Sally the um, diamond and lone star bias ruler. What does it do? Why do we need it? Because the... Um, the lovely people at Creative Grid spend quite a long time working out what is it that people need and how do they work. I mean, you know, if you've ever bought a Creative Grid ruler, that they are fantastic. Firstly, because they are precisely and accurately cut. You know it's th that they all work the measurements. They also have this wonderful system where they have these sort of slightly um, <coughs> textured, oh, that was a bit of a cough, raised bits on the back of the rulers. Now they have them all the way around the edges, but they also have spots of them here and there. The reason for that is it grips the fabric because it's really important if you're cutting precisely, which is the whole point of these rulers, is that they stay in place. They also have all the different measurements that you need, including the seam allowances, the angles, everything that you need on it. They also all come with a little instruction booklet that tells you how the work they work and a little QR code which you can scan and it gives you a demo on how to work it. So they are, I mean, they are fantastic quality um, creative grids, which is brilliant. So this is the ruler. It's on screen. I'm coming on screen at the moment. No, there it is. $24.99. $24.99. So I'm going to let um, Sally Ann explain to you why you need one of these and what it does. But um, she has made some things in advance for us. So we'll just show you a couple of pictures of what you can do if you've got this ruler. I mean, look at those. That's stunning, isn't it? So you have all those different stars, some of them have got different angles in them, different um, 
it does, uh, it cuts diamonds from one inch width to six inch width. And it does the Lone Star design as well, which is the, the pictures that Sally Ann just made. It's very difficult to cut these kind of angles yourself using your own rulers. And it's very difficult to do it. The way that this works is you don't have Y seams. And anyone who's ever sewn a Y seam will understand they're very fiddly and very hard to get just right. But the way that this ruler works is if you want to do some beautiful, incredibly clever looking patchwork, an easy way, this is a ruler to have. Now, we're very lucky to have the first time the Batik Barley fabrics. Now, you will have seen before, if you've watched Sewing Street, the Barley Pop fabrics, which are packs of um, just strips of the fabric, very narrow, and they are all made in barley, that's why they're called Barley Pops, but they are the beautiful Batik, you know, the lovely method where they put um, wax on and then they dye it and then they take the wax off and it's very traditional, but you get all those layers and layers of different colours. If you see, search barley on the website, just bar but we had a lot of them that were in by the half metre, but we didn't think we'd get the stripes. So we had a lot of the others but we are very lucky that we did get the stripes. So if you have a look on the website, you'll see all the other ones that we did do. But this is the first time ever, ever, ever get the stripes. It's a really clever way that it's done because it's a resistance dye. So what you do is you dye and then the, um, the wax that you put on, when that's that, the dye won't go through that. When you then heat it, that dissolves and then you're left with that space. And they do it several, several times. So every piece of fabric is different. I'm going to show you, I think it shows it quite well on this green. Let's have a look at the fabric by the half meter so you can see how it works. If you've not seen Batik before. So look at that, it's amazing. Each one of these fabrics is striped, but they're not exact stripes. They've all got a slight wave, a bit seaweedy. But then you've got also almost a tie-dyed effect as well. So you've got this stripe going throughout, and then you've got spots of different other colours, but a bit tie-dyed. So it's beautiful. There's so much movement and texture in this fabric. But the great thing about it is because of the it's, it's dyed so many times to achieve this, it's a little bit stiffer than a normal fabric. I mean, it's still a quilting weight cotton. It still has that lovely drape, but it is a bit stiffer. So it's so lovely to work with, particularly for patchwork and quilting. When with something like this, where you are constantly, you're cutting on the bias all over the place, it's really nice to have fabric with a little bit more weight. It's not enough that it makes it stiff, but it just gives it that extra weight, which makes it easier to cut. So this fabric is available in the bundle and by the half metre. You can choose whether you want all of them or just one of them. So in the bundle, which is on the screen at the moment, 57.99, you get half a metre of all eight fabrics. So that's um, four metres in total. So if you want to have a play with the ruler, which, and it works really well with this because of the stripes in it, but they're not so definite, that when you cut them in all different ways with the different angles, it just looks beautiful. So you've got this lovely teal colour. It's a tealy green, it's like seaweed. Really lovely pale blue. This looks a bit pyjamas, doesn't it? <laughs> lovely pale blue, but it's pyjamas. Yeah. It's the sky. Be brilliant. This pack would be brilliant for doing applique, particularly pictorial applique, because you because it looks so natural. I think because of all the dye in it. So you've got the pale blue pyjamas. That's the sky. That's the grass. Then you've got this sweetie pink. Should we look at that one. That's lovely, isn't it? That's raspberry ripple. It's like an ice cream sorbet. Beautiful pink. But isn't it lovely that you've got really deep colours? I mean, it looks almost like a wash over it as well. And this is done. They're all made using, it's not just sort of a, a fake pretend one. They are made, done, made using the traditional batik technique. And it's the only way that you get that kind of print. And because of the amount of dye in it, um, then you've got this lovely amber coloured one. It's really lovely, isn't it? Sunshine yellow. Then you've got turquoise. So that's the so it is really good for pictorial work. That's the sea. That's the sky. That's the grass. Then you've got a lovely midnight sky, the navy, and then this really lovely plum. 
Victoria Plum. So that's the bundle. $57.99, four metres of fabric, brand, brand new today. We have never had this before and it is absolutely stunning because obviously you can get the barley pot fabric in all lots of different um, types of prints and floral and stuff but I think these stripes are really clever because it's nice to have the stripe in it and have that sort of traditional linear look but the fact that the stripes are all different widths and lengths and they're slightly wobbly it's just very natural isn't it so 57.99 for the four meter bundle half a meter each of the eight fabrics but we are also selling them by the half meter so if you only want one of the colors remember our fabric is all cut to order so, which one should we start with? Let's start at that end. We'll start at this end. This is Masala. It's called Masala. Is that because of, I don't know. No, because normal Masala wine is spelt without an R, so I don't know what that means. It's a sort of a colour like Victoria Plum Aubergine sort of colour. So if you, because our fabric is cut to order, it's £7.49 for half a metre. If you want more than that, if you want, say, three metres, you will, it will be cut as a three metre length. You just need to put six units in your basket. Isn't that stunning? So, you know, dressmaking. If you were thinking dressmaking, beautiful, isn't it? But remember, because it's cut to order, you will have it as a whole piece. You wouldn't be sent lots of half metre pieces. It will be sent as a continuous length. That's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it would be great for dressmaking. The sew girl patterns would work really well with it. But also, you know, just cushions for your home. I mean, you put those on a grey sofa, they'd look absolutely stunning. You know, I mean, they are lovely, obviously, for patchwork, applique, all different kind of that, that sort of sewing. But just as a fabric on its own, it is beautiful. Imagine, like, if you, it's half a metre that, that's two cushion fronts. Seven ninety nine for two cushions. Bargain. Oh, sorry, seven forty nine. Seven forty nine for two cushions. Right, next we'll do dark blue, which is called marlin. I'm now struggling. Is a marlin a fish? I think it might be a fish. Have you ever heard of a marlin? Yeah. The marlin is the dad in Finding Nemo. I <laughs> knew it was a fish. <laughs> ah, it is also a fish, actually. It's not just the dad in Finding Nemo. It is actually a fish. I'm quite impressed. I, I must have dredged that up from somewhere. And actually, the top of the marlin fish body is this colour. I've only been told this by Hannah. Not that I knew that. They look like they've got swords on them. So this is a very like deep midnight blue with really dark blue swishes, swishes and stripes. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love that one. So it, it, I, I thought it was a fish and not just the dad. It's a very, very big, scary fish. Right, the next one is this really lovely turquoise that's actually called Augusta. I'm struggling now. Why that's called Augusta? It's called Augusta. Let me take the sticker off, turn it over. It's actually turquoise. It's nothing to do with them. And what's great is because they are all, um, they've all obviously will be the same as and they'll all be stripes and they'll be this colour, but all the patterns and the swishes and the water marks and everything will be slightly different on each one. So wherever you cut it, and what's great about using this fabric for what Sally Ann's going to be doing is that, you know, when you cut diamonds in different places across it as well, that you get the stripes going other ways. So if you want a really beautiful, clear, bright it's a bit like you know the turquoise glass that you get it has that really a real clarity to it even though it's called augusta next we're going to do this yellow one that's called da, 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 da. daffodil oh that is definitely daffodil it's more narcissi i'd say because it's yellow and orange yellow and orange but it is very daffodil. That's beautiful, that one. Sunshine. Perfect for the sunshine. I think it's a great daffodil colour. So, you know, if you bought some of this, you could use the little, the small scraps for sort of pictorial work. They'd be lovely. This one is a lovely tone of amber. And Hannah would like this in a structured kimono. 
What is a structured kimono? As opposed to a non-structured. Is that as different to a non-structured kimono? <laughs> Hannah would like it in a structured kimono. We're not absolutely <laughs> sure what that is. Just to actually just a kimono be fair. What is this one called? Persimmon. Persimmon. Isn't that a fruit? A persimmon. Yeah, I think so. It is a fruit. Oh, it's like it's like vocabulary bingo today, isn't it? Yes, it is a fruit. And it is this colour. I think it might be a persimmon is like a pear, that sort of thing. Is it like that? Don't know. Yeah, anyway, and it is that colour and it's a fruit. But it's very amber, I'd say. Not brown, amber, because it's a golden brown. Should we look, see, look, see, look at the other side. Where, whatever part you choose of it, you've got all those different watermarks. They contain no fat. But um, Hannah, I don't think any fruit contains fat, does it? <laughs> they, fruits contain a lot of sugar, but I don't, I don't think fruits contain fat. Hannah says, this fruit persimmon contains no fat, but I don't think fruits do. This one, should we move on to the pink one? <laughs> <laughs> this one's called pink. And I think it's called that <laughs> because it's pink. <laughs> <laughs> Clever that, isn't it? I wonder where they came up with that name. It is different shades of pink, though. It is very um, raspberry and then very tutti frutti as well. Tutti frutti end of pink. But it's beautiful, a really, really um, pretty pink. And then the next one, oh, that's not folded up well. The next one is like a sky blue. And this one is called, not pyjamas. Oh, I'd laugh if it was called, please let it be called pyjamas. Oh, the code, one moment, ah, is XBUI20. Please let it be called pyjamas. Uh, it's called Azure. Okay, I'll let them have that. I'll let them have that. It would have been better as pyjamas. It's called Azure and it is, it is, but it's like a very cloud sky blue on a lovely summer's day. Now there's the other side of it. But it's lovely. You get these odd splodges of much darker blue, just I guess where more dye has gone into the fabric. I'd love to know how they do this because the stripes are in sections. They don't run the whole thing. So therefore they don't all line up all the way along. So they must be printed somehow. I'd love to know how that's made. Maybe we could have a, um, a sewing street visit to the factory. That would be a nice idea, wouldn't it, Hannah? Could you arrange that? In Bali, me and you. <laughs> me and you. What? Yes, when Hannah was on holiday, where she went, she more than watched them making silk out of water lilies. Interesting. I thought silk was made from silk moths. But even more expensive than... Um, silk moss silk is water lily silk well this one is green <laughs> I want to see this silk it's called chamomile yeah well we can't go there at the moment but one day <laughs> this one is called chamomile which hmm, yeah I don't know I would say chamomile is a much lighter green than this this should be called jade shouldn't it? Absolutely. Chamomile is a very, very pale green. Anyway, I was thinking pink, but that's calamine, isn't it? No, chamomile, as in chamomile tea, or chamomile lawn, is a lot paler. But this is a very deep jade emerald green. I think, actually, this one's my favourite. But it's got blues and greens in it. Anyway, so if you want half a metre of this, £7.49. Remember, if you want more than half a metre, we do cut to order, so it will be sent as a continuous piece. Right, so that's all the fabric. You can buy it by the half metre, you can buy it in the bundle, and we've done the ruler. So, so, Sally Ann, how did you get on with the ruler? Tell Good. me what it does, because mine's all wrapped in plastic, so I've no idea. <laughs> well, that's great. You're not going to be able to help me out, No, but you? I'm going to listen and ask questions. <laughs> I know it cuts Lone Stars. It cuts, it's a diamond and Lone Star ruler. So it cuts diamonds. Mm. Um, you make the Lone Star segment and then you cut the diamond from that, which I'll show you sort of further Which is on. quite difficult, isn't it, really? A difficult shape. Yes, a it's a difficult shape. Um, 
The instructions are really, really good. Okay, yeah. and they come free. Yeah, come with, come with it. You know, stick with the instructions and also the video, the YouTube video. Okay. Okay, the YouTube video is very inspiring. Mm. Um, in the YouTube video, they show you extra things which are sort of partial stars, which are set in a cushion, which looks really nice. Um, and ways that you can use the diamonds in borders and, and that sort oh, of thing. Okay. So I, I haven't got time to sort of to go that the whole far video, in. But yeah. it is on there. So if you go onto their YouTube site. Yeah, they've it? usually got, there you are, they've got a scan thing, Yeah, so you they? can do that or you can go onto their, I guess it's on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. So let's just start working through the instructions. Can you find the right place? Yeah. Yes. Okay. There they are. So you can make various diamond sizes and the key is actually on the front of the instructions and it tells you what width of strip you need to cut um, for each diamond. Okay. okay, so depending on what size you want your finished yep. diamond to be. And the block sizes that they create go right up to 29 inches, which would be like a mini sort of quilt size, yeah, wouldn't that's it, cool. really? Yeah. Or you could go up to sort of like a 20 inch cushion mm. that would look really effective oh as so well. you get a big size out of this then or you can just make join them all together yes yeah um and then the instructions go on to tell you how to cut the diamonds and then how to cut the setting pieces which are the base triangle and the top triangle and then how to assemble the block so okay sort of walk through the instructions so here's one that i made earlier so just talk about this one first. Oh, that's beautiful. So, so that's using the um, I've got to remember what they called now, the Marlin one. <laughs> the Marlin. And the striped pajamas and the pajamas. Yes. Was it no? <laughs> or was it the pajamas? Or was it that blue? Oh, no, you've used the um, that colour. I can't remember what that one was called now. Oh, it wasn't. Oh no, it's not the pajamas, is it? Was it uh, August? August. August, obviously. Okay. Yes, so that's beautiful. I love the way that you. So, when you work with this fabric, did you have to think about how to cut the stripes and how that, that would work? <laughs> I didn't think. I said, oh, I no, said no. earlier on, said I fly by the seat of my pants, yeah. so I just go straight in and go for it. So, I just went straight in and went for it. But it works really well, it doesn't it? It works really so, well. So, so, you can obviously cut them in any direction. Yes. So, these are the setting pieces, and, and because of the stripe, it works really well. You can see the stripe sort of going yeah. in. Yeah. Well, actually, you, it almost blends across in that one. There you go. There's one sort of earlier. So you can see that that is a bias piece, mm. and that is deliberately cut so that it's inside, and the outside edges are right. straight of grain. Makes that that makes it a lot better. In the instructions, it tells you how to do that, or how to manipulate the ruler oh, to okay. to achieve that. Um, what else did I want to say about it? Once you've sewn it all together, you get your quarter inch look on the edges. So that you get a perfect So block. it's all worked out so that you can yep. then join that as a block into something else. Yep. But I guess what's nice about these fabrics, because the stripes are slightly wiggly, they don't have to match up. Exactly. Because that's, if you've got an absolute perfect stripe fabric, if they don't match up, they would look really odd. Yes, they would do. Um, and the other thing is, this fabric works really well with this technique because it's always... What did you, you were saying earlier? Is it salt water? It's, it's well, got they use, it's well, got a traditionally to they it, use wax, it? but there's loads of dye in it because they dye it about seven times at least. Yeah. And then they put it back in and they dye it and they dye it. I don't know if they still use wax. And I think that's what gives it the so it's got like a, Yeah, it's got a crispness to it already. You can use salt for batty but I, and wax. I don't know what they use now, but I think it's the amount of dye. Probably. So it's already halfway there to being a little bit extra stiff, mm. but um, you would spray it as well with some best press. Because of the Because the of biases. the, yeah, the bias issues. So was it quite easy to work out how to cut that each diamond then to put it together so, once yeah, you followed the, it? You follow it through in the yeah. instructions. And as I said, you can, you can cut different size diamonds, but today I'm just going to stick with cutting the maximum size rather okay. than flipping around with sizes. Right. Um, and we talked earlier about using the ruler. Mm. And if you want to make smaller diamonds, I would definitely recommend that you use tape. Yeah? Right, yeah. So positioning tapes on your ruler, on the, you know, like washi tape, yeah. will help you. So if you're going to make, I don't know, four inch diamonds, you might want to put it on the four, all the lines that re relate. Yeah, because otherwise the problem is, is that you, if you just get one wrong, and, and I mean, it's, it's great you have these multi-use rulers. Yeah. 
but it is easy to forget where you're supposed to be cutting. Exactly, this is why I'm going to stick with the six, six inches okay. today. But if you're doing flipping. a smaller one... Yeah, just set up your ruler to start off with. Put your washi tape on the various places that you need to for the diamond and for, right. the, for okay. the setting no, that triangles. Makes sense. And then you can just flip it and use it over yeah. and over and over and over again then. So, um, going back to this one that I put together, just a couple of things on the back. So I have pressed it so that all of my seams go to the left. Okay. Okay. Um, they don't say that in the instructions, but when I've made like a Lemoyne star before, mm. I've always used that sort of technique. Just so they face the same. Does that make it flatter? Makes it flatter, makes it sit better. You should be able to get some sort of, you know, that little twist in the middle? Yes. Um, I haven't with this one. I've just trimmed it, but you, it all depends on how you trim as you go. Okay. Um, but the, the, the reason I want you to see the middle is top tip with, a, with this sort of thing is when you sew the two halves together, I would recommend that you sew from the middle to the edge, from the middle to the edge. And why is that then? To stop it warping. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, that is really helpful in stopping the whole thing warping. And also another tip is sometimes, I mean, this one's got a little bit, but I've it's been a bit folded up in my bag. Um, you get a little bit of bagginess in the middle. Okay. Water is your best friend. Okay. Okay. So if you just take a spray bottle, mm. spray the, the center just sort of around here with some water, cotton will shrink. It will shrink up by about 5%. Uh, okay. And you'll get rid of some of that bagginess. Brilliant tip. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so that's the way to get rid Rather of it. Rather than go, oh, God, I've got all this bagginess in yeah. the middle and I might <laughs> put something on top it of it. It happens to the best of us. Right, but a bit of water, that's yep. a very good tip. Okay, so let's get back to the ruler. So I've pressed this. I'm just going to start off by cutting a strip, which I'll then hopefully turn into a diamond. So let's go through. So this is using the daffodil. The daffodil, daffodil yes. one. Now we know what they're called. The daffodil one. So I'm just going to use it on by the right place. Because I've got a bigger sewing machine on a bit. Yeah. Yes, your beast of a sewing machine is taking over the table. So I've pressed this, I've starched it, um, and now I'm ready to cut. So yep. you line up the left along the left yep. edge. Ooh. Right? Okay. So. <gasps> it's a bit scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you commit to cutting, you're like, yeah. oh my God, this is in the right place. I always feel like that when I'm cutting. So just turn it round. <laughs> place it back on. Oh, you've got two layers together? Yeah, I've got two here. So I'm going to hopefully make two. Okay, bit of that bit. I'm going to turn this here. My ruler around this way. And then you can see that it fits perfectly. That's amazing. You'd never be able to do that yourself. I mean, really hard, wouldn't yeah. it? We'd never get those angles. That's why they've spent all the time and the effort and the engineering into this and the thought. Okay, so there's your, as you can see, it's perfectly perfect. Perfect. perfect okay, so there's your diamond ready to go. So that's the first bit. Right. But obviously, that you're doing the biggest one, so you could do, well, they've got like half yep. inch tiny ones. Okay. Take a different colour for the background. And this one was um, Marsala? Masala? Masala. Okay. <laughs> but they're all underneath on the web. If you want to buy any of the batik fabrics, if you scroll down, um, they're all there. But this one's called Masala. We don't know what that is, really. Anyone knows what Masala is? I, I know wine, it's a wine, yeah. but yeah. I don't think it's got an R in it, has it? And it's not that, is it that colour? I don't know. But it's not chicken tikka masala, is it? <laughs> because yeah. I don't think it's that one. Chicken tikka masala is sort of orange. Maybe it is masala wine. It's very nice. I bought some of that at Christmas. Mm. Right. Let's just give it a little press. Okay. 
Right, so now we're going to cut a strip exactly the same again to so make. Yeah, so you just use your ruler. Yep. So. Oh, and I suppose, so if you're doing a different size, so say you were cutting a four inch one, you would just line it up on the four inch mark. Oh, no, it gives you a line that says what the finish size is. Oh, right, okay. So if you're cutting a four inch one, you just cut it on the four inch line. going to neaten up, square up an edge. So I'm just lining it up on my mat. Just going to take that off. Okay, turn it over that way. Now, so this is the base triangle and what you do is you line up, it's actually got B on for base. So you just oh, line yeah. it up on the edge. So this is different. Oh, so this is the triangles that go around the edges of the diamonds. Yes. So you can see that it just overlaps just slightly at the top. And it's got like a little step Oh, it's got a little there. line though. Yep. Help you line it up. That's quite good though, isn't it? Because I imagine if you were cutting through this, you'd think, oh, I haven't done it right then because it... It sticks out, but they've actually marked the line on the yep. ruler so that you know it works. So those are two of your base units. Okay, let's go back to the bigger piece. So now you need to cut the top triangle. And the top triangle, you have to actually cut in a rather strange way because you're dealing with the bias. Oh, and this is where the instructions come in. Yeah. Because they know that you want the bias on the inside, not the outside. Yeah. So, you just line up oh. That is good because it is difficult when you're sewing blocks together when the bias is on the edges because it really moves, yep. doesn't it? So now you're going to use the other end of the ruler, she says. And then that cuts the, the triangle shape. The triangle shape. So you're going to line, you've got some lines on your ruler which show you how to... Oh, well it says B, it's all yeah. measured. I guess so because everything is marked on here, it's very easy to see what's what. Mm -hmm. So, line you up. I mean, it's quite good this, you know, it says finish size, yeah. five and a half inches, but it's a six inch strip because it's worked it all out for you. Yes. It takes them ages to develop these rulers. So that would be one of your top triangles. Okay. Let's get rid of that because otherwise we'll get confused. Okay. So the way the units go together is so. okay so the units are going to fit together like this can you yeah. see how it's going to begin to go the next one would go there and you'd have another triangle which is the same as the first yeah it's exactly the same yeah so Basically, you, you're doing making it in quarters. Yeah? <coughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. Right. Moving on. And then, then you say, okay, so, so that's easy enough. So you yep. just follow it all, and it, those measurements are all on here. So they've labelled finish size, even though the four and a half inch finish size is four, is five inches. They've labelled it all, and they've got the B marks and yep. for, that, for the top triangles. 
So what did you do next okay. then? So the other things you can, I started to play with it then. So mm. the other things that you can do with it is you can make a strip set. Okay. Okay, so, so if you make a strip set, and these are like two and a half inch strips. Right. So I've just joined them together. So three, so three two and a half inch strips are going to be six and a half inches raw edge. Yes. Which is exactly the same width as the ruler. Exactly. So as long as whatever finished size you want, you just make it divisible by. So you did yep. yours as two inches, but cut as two and a half because you wanted it to go into six. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, you, you can make smaller, you could go down to one inch strips. Mm. Or they could be all different sizes. They don't have to be. You could be random. You yeah. could be very random. Totally random. So then I started to do, 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 play around with it. So you just join all the strips and then you use it as if it were a non-joined strip and just cut it like that. That. Okay, that would go together like that. So really I'm going to sew that together mm. just so you can sort yeah, of get see how it works. Yeah. It's very pretty, isn't it? Now, I like the the Bali fabrics. They actually all go together, although they're all completely different colours. They because they I guess because they're the same dye method and the same pattern, they work really well yeah, together. Yeah, they really do. And I just wanted to show you that, can you see that because of the way that you've used the ruler and the way the ruler works, it actually gives you that quarter inch because it's got those little clipped off. Oh, uh, yes, yeah? yes. So it helps sense. you with positioning it as well. So you haven't got to work. Because sometimes when you join two things together on angles, it's hard to know where to yeah, start. Yeah, exactly. It's always reassuring when you see that and think, oh, yeah, that does, does look mm. like it's going to be quarter inch. Right. Let's see if you and I can bond. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know, it's like, it is like a car, you set it to yourself and I think with the pedal on it you can set it so wherever you press is, you, can, you have a whole choice of different things you can do with it, whether it's the foot lift or the speed. Yeah. If I was home I would definitely pin it but I'm just going <laughs> to wing it. Okay. So I'm just going to finger press make one unit. So the same machine that um, Sally Ann is using is the Juki NX, which we don't currently have in stock. But the one that we do have, um, Oops. we have the Juki UX8 instead. But they're all from the same family. I mean, it's a beautiful machine, uh, which does have the same facility where you can set the foot to be what you want it to be. So it just depends, you know, because everyone has different things that they want it to be. So I think whoever used this one last set it to themselves. But we do have a different model, but it does the same thing. <gasps> and it's got a feature that you can access YouTube from your sewing machine. That's the one we have in stock. That's amazing. So you can access YouTube from your sewing machine and watch how to do the creative grids. That's a miracle. Fantastic. Um, half the stock, stock of the barley stripe bundle has gone. So if you want that, where you get the eight, half metre of the eight different fabrics, so that's four metres in total, half of that's gone. So I would pop it in your basket. It's very lovely. Oh, also, we do have, I forgot to show you earlier, was the wadding, the wadding by the half metre. So this is great. It's an 80-20 wadding, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. It's a beautiful quality wadding. But what's lovely about this is you can buy it by the half metre and we cut it to order as well. It's like buying fabric, only it's wadding. But it's really, really, really wide. That's half of it. 245, two, nearly two and a half metres. Look, that's it folded in half. Look how big it is. It's like that, and then another one. So, you know, super king size bed width, but then you can buy 
96 inches wide it's really really wide and we sell it by the half meter so it's 6.99 for the half meter um, and then you just put as many units as you want in your basket and because we've got it all in big rolls we will cut it to order so i mean it doesn't have to be just for quilts it's a great thing because it's so wide you get loads of it you know if you're making floor cushions or normal cushions or wall hangings or place mats or table mats or bags or all sorts of things bag linings it's brilliant for that and cotton and the 80 20 is a really nice because it's not really thick it, but it gives it a nice weight and body without being too high a loft so when you don't want too much definition but what is lovely about it and i know this because i've done it is that once you've quilted with it if you then wash your quilt in cold water it shrinks just very slightly and gives it that really sort of home old antique quilt look. feel doesn't it yeah i do that to mine i really love that look that it's sort of slightly beautiful. scrunched yeah up texture yeah that you and then the first time i did it i was just amazed i was really worried i spent weeks making this quilt and i was worried that the colors would run or something yep. would go wrong and i followed all the instructions and i, I didn't even know that my sewing machine and uh, my washing machine even had a cold water setting never washed anything on cold and then it came out it was like oh <gasps> It was beautiful. It is super scary the mm. first time you do it. I mean, because you think all those hours that you've put know, in, hours and you're thinking, well. oh, this goes wrong. And you get that point where you think, <laughs> I wish I'd pre washed my fabrics. Yeah. Because I'm worried that something will yeah. run now. <laughs> and for the first sort of 10 minutes, I sat in front of the washing I machine. I sat there on the floor in yeah. front of the machine in my utility room watching it through the Please glass. don't. I don't know what I thought it was going to do if it did run. <laughs> and then when it came out, and it doesn't shrink loads, but it's just enough that gives it that kind of antique quilt look. And that's what this wadding does. It's beautiful stuff. But it's really nice that it's so wide and you can buy it by the half metre because then you're only getting what you need. So 6 99 that's actually quite good value. Well, that's the one I always use. So how easy is it to sew these together because you've got a lot of biases going on? Yeah, so on. you've got to be a little bit careful. But remember, you've got a lot of starch in the fabric and I would pin it, especially this long seam. So do you have to match things at a certain point? Yes, because you want, want it to match up, don't you? Okay. So, I would, there you go, I would, so I would press things in that position as I went round sort of all the way to yeah. the left and the hope that it went all the way around like it did on my previous one. But that is what it's going to look like, that one. Well, have we got the, the pictures? Can we have the pictures, please, Hannah? <sighs> yes, so... <laughs> right. That, the those, one on the left... So the one on the far right and the one in the middle are just single of these strip sets. Oh, OK. But it just depends how you arrange them. Yes. Oh, so because the one on the right, it sort of created an extra star. And then one in the middle looks like one of those um, whirly things. What are they called? Whirly things. You know, when you go to the fair and they go round. A whirly gig. And they're whirly plastic. Gig. And they're like windmills. A windmill. Windmills. That's the word. Okay. <laughs> I really know you buy them on a stick and they go round and round and round, don't they? So it looks like a windmill, the one in the centre. So, I think so is the one on the left, how did you do that one? Okay, so the one on the left oh. is made from strip sets. And it shows you in the instructions, you can see here, coming right on 7B, it shows you how to set up your strip sets, just like you would a normal Lone Star. Yeah. So you join it together in strips yes. in and the you, same way as you did the last one? Yeah, but, but you offset them because you're going to cut. Oh, so yeah. to save on fabric. Yeah, to save on fabric. So you're going to offset them by, by two inches. And right. Then, so here are the strip sets. Yeah. And what you would do is you would just cut. So you'd make two types of strip set. Let's make, make sure I get this right in front of me. So can you see in this diamond, this strip set is the mm. same as that one. Yes. It's just rotated. Okay. And then this one is different. So those two came from this set. 
And in the instructions, it tells you all this? Yeah. Okay. So, so you could use any fabrics for this. Is yeah. Once you've sort of followed it through. Because it actually looks really, really clever. Like, you've worked out some amazing maths to do this. But I guess it's just you've got to follow the measurements on the ruler, why, which is why it's so important to tape it if yes. you're using a different size. Right. And it must take them ages to develop these things. And testing it and some are going, oh, that doesn't work. No. I know. The whole testing of it. Because, well, I, I guess there was, I was making something at the weekend and I almost threw it through the window about ten times because <laughs> it just kept going wrong. I know. And I think, think of the time, the time. But doing this as well that they've worked out to make it easy to understand as well because there's so many measurements on it. There's black lines and white lines and black and white lines. <laughs> I don't know what those are for. Imagine. Or maybe they're just really good at it now. <laughs> they don't anymore. Yeah. They do get a different person to design each ruler, I've noticed as well. They all get a different person to... Design each ruler. Because the um, dressed in plate ruler I was looking at earlier is designed by Lynn Edwards. But this one... It's designed by Rachel Cross. So they obviously use um, quilt designers to help them create them. Another one. So you can see it tells you the strips to cut. I just cut a two and a half. Right, so that's your sort of strip set that's just pink, blue, pink, and then you mix that with yep. green, pink, blue. Yeah, to make, make one mm. of those. So it's very it's easy to sort of isn't it? put forward. So have we got that picture again or is it gone? It's like one of those um, jumpers, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so that one would make the one there look on the far right. Mm. But you could, you could make a quilt that had all different size diamonds on it as well. They make lovely a border, a smaller version, yeah. make a nice border around a quilt. Yeah, you can go. So once you've worked out the theory, so would you, you can recommend go. starting with the biggest size? Yes, I would. I mean, mm. I started with a size um, five one, which is what it says in the instructions. But I found it easier once I'd watched the video, she actually just uses the maximum, which is the size six right. all the way through. And I think that's a better way to start rather than thinking, well, what line is that on the ruler? Because you, know? you know you're just yeah. out of lines yeah. then. So just use the ruler first on maximum mm. and then think about, okay, so I want a smaller diamond. What am I going to do? Um, how, how small do I want it? What are the strips? How can I set up my ruler with the washi tape? So yeah, so once you've got it. the concept, then changing size is a bit easier, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, because there is, there's even one. I love the design on here that looks like knitting. On the front. Yeah. Oh yes. Um. There's, there's. Uh, what does she call it? Can you get a close up on my knitting ruler? Yeah, that, almost like a braid effect. Yeah. Um. She shows you how to create that with. I mean, because you can create that with the diamonds. Look. That one there. Look at that. So that's like a knitting, like a braid effect, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a braid and. She used that in a border, and that looked really <gasps> lovely, you know, in a border yes. going round. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? You know when you want to put a border around a quilt, it's diff there's not, you're never really sure what to, what to do. do yeah. But it's nice you could put little stars, or I love, I love the knitting one. That's great, isn't it? And she showed you another border with um, even bigger diamonds, um, and she used like a black-white scenario, mm. and it, it was big diamonds going all the way around the edge in black and white and it really it really packed a punch it was really geometric mm. you know it was a very modern looking quilt it looked like it had depth but it obviously didn't it was no. it was good but things that these rulers you know if you want something that's really dynamic you can use very modern fabrics but actually it would work really well it's quite a traditional thing isn't yeah. it this the design yes so in you know really traditional like liberties and florals it would work really well as well yeah exactly this sort of softer look well, thank you so yeah. much for that, because when you look at these rulers, you think, <gasps> no idea what that does, and it really looks really <laughs> scary, but you've really, really explained it. It's made me want to have a go. I, I want to make some little ones, really little quite baby fancy ones, yeah. there. <laughs> I'd have to start off with the big ones. Thank you so much. So um, when will you be back with us? I'm back on the 11th of April now. Okay. Yep. That's, that's a while, isn't it? Is that yeah. like nearly a month? Then? Yeah. <laughs> it feels like it, doesn't it? Do you know I lose what, what date? Was that a couple of weeks then? 
I don't know, do you know, I've lost. No, I, have, I had like a month. I had a bit of a gap. Mm, so right. I had like a month off. Because we, we've <coughs> been seeing each other so regularly. I know, regularly, I know. Every and fortnight, then I, and then I yeah. missed. Yes, I <laughs> noticed that. I thought, where is she? Where, where is, is she? she? I've had somebody else. I was at home doing some rather off piece sewing. Oh, okay. <laughs> off piece sewing. <laughs> I do some weird stuff. When, I, when I'm sort of out of control, yes. it's just like, oh, let me try this and I'll try that. Nice. I get a little but bit that's how you learn, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. It's like you say, you're experimenting with different things. Yeah. That's the best way. Oh, well, thank you so much. So we look forward to seeing you back then. Um, should we just have a quick recap? Of the ruler, which now we know everything about. See, an hour ago, knew nothing about it. Quarter of the stock has already gone, so if you want it, it's 24 99 And obviously, Sally has explained exactly what it does in many, many different sizes. Um, now, remember, all of our shows go on to YouTube. So if you want to watch it back, if you get the ruler, you go through the instructions. But if you want to have a look at the way that Sally has combined the different fabrics and cut things and showed you, then just go back. Just remember what date it was on, which is today. But actually, you can search on YouTube, so it, it will tell you. But it, that's just really useful because obviously you, the point, you know, that we have demos and that we show you how things is that we want to teach you. We want you to learn different techniques. So go back and watch it again. But it is great. I mean, it's a, it is a piece of Perspex, but it is a magical piece of Perspex with lots of grippy bits underneath. And it's great because it, everything's been worked out for you and it really does work. And it's one of those things, you it's not just a one quilt wonder. You use it for everything over and over and over again. You, well, you can use it as the main centrepiece for your quilt, but you can also use it for little borders as well and cushions. Table mats and table runners would look very nice with all these diamonds on or knitting, particularly like the knitting. Um, and then we'll just recap the, the bundle. So all eight of the fabrics and because they're all the same design, although they're all very different colours, they really blend together well. There's only three of them left, fifty-seven ninety-nine. However, they are all, so if you don't manage to get a bundle, they are all available by the half metre. They are seven, nine, seven, 57, no, I was talking about the half metre, sorry. The whole bundle is fifty-seven ninety-nine. But if you want to buy them by the half metre, they are £7.49 for half a metre. So if you're thinking, well, actually, I really like um, the navy one that's called Marlin. Um, and I, oh, well, that'd be lovely as a background for my quilt. You can buy more. So if you need two metres of it, put four units in your basket and it is cut to order. So you will be given a continuous length. The dark blue is actually the most popular at the moment. That's because it's got the Finding Nemo name. This is my favourite one which is a green one and um, and then all of these are available by the half meter you've got the blue pink amber daffodil turquoisey color and masala which must be masala i'm going to, have to look into that and also don't forget about the wadding it's one of those things that we keep on the website all the time so if we don't mention or you're, uh, you're not aware that we have it but we've managed to buy it by the massive roll so we can cut it for you to length to whatever you need. So it's available in half meter increments. If you need four meters of it, put eight units in your basket. It is two and a half meters wide. It is massive, but it's 80-20. So it is a really good, all the um, different guests and designers that we have on air, they always say it's a good wadding. It's a great thing, you know, it's not a low quality one. It really is a wadding. It's beautifully needled. Um, it's made by Vlyseline and it is a beautiful wadding. So we will see you, well, I will see you back here after the break for some amazing um, tools. And we will also have a panel announcement. But, and patterns back in stock, but you'll have to wait till after the break. So I'll see you back here in a few minutes time. Hi, I've been asked to do a little bit of an introduction about me, so here goes for Sewing Street. I'm Sally Ann Harrison, I'm based in the UK in Bristol. Um, I lived here all my life, apart from a short stint in North Carolina, where I lived um, for three years from 2000 to 2003. 
I specialise in patchwork and quilting. I am a complete patchwork and quilting addict. I love small piecing, I love wool applique, all forms of applique, um, and I also like making small little crafty projects. How did I get into sewing? Well, I've sewn all my life. I remember the first thing I ever made was um, like a little bikini top from one of my mother's old overalls when I was about nine. Um, I got married when I was about 20, 21 and started making curtains at that time. So I was a curtain maker for a long period of time. But it was in 2000 when I moved to the US that I really got into quilting big time. I discovered a local patchwork and quilting store. I took classes. Um, I made loads of quilts. I made some fantastic friends. Um, I met a great tutor called Michelle May. Um, and by the time I left, I was actually beginning to exhibit in 2003. So that's how I got into doing what I do. Tell us something unexpected about yourself. Well, one of the, the strange things about me is that I'm the world's worst knitter. Um, I can do most crafts, I crochet, I do punch needle, I do obviously patchwork and quilting and dressmaking, but knitting, mm -mm. I The pins go in all sorts of weird directions. I have to concentrate. If anybody you know, rings the doorbell, I can't stop mid row. I am the world's worst knitter. Sewing tips to share with viewers. Um, it's got to be the beard trimmer trick. I mean, why use an unpicker when you can use a beard trimmer to take out the seams that you've sewn incorrectly? It's just the best tip ever, I reckon. And a claim to fame. Probably my claim to fame based on my sewing career was that in 2017, I was invited to the Houston Quilt Festival, the International Quilt Festival, and it was there that I demonstrated some wool applique. It was a fantastic experience. And if anyone's debating going to the International Quilt Festival next year, go. It is absolutely fabulous. And that's a bit about me. Thank you very much for listening. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there!
while we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. And welcome back to Sewing Street. And as promised, we have an announcement. Very, very important panel announcement. The bullfinches are back in stock. We have managed to secure 100 more bullfinches. Can you imagine the 100 bullfinches all sitting in a tree? So if you want the panel, it's on the screen at the moment. This is what it looks like. The bullfinch in resplendent colours of corally red and blues on a lovely, um, like a slate blue background on the panel as well. So he's 10 and a half inches square, so that includes your seam allowance. Two labels saying bullfinch, and then you get five complementary coordinating fabric strips that are two and a half inches wide, 43 inches long. So like your jet design roll strips and they go all the way across. So that's the panel on its own. Now, before we were selling the panel and instructions, there was all sorts and all sorts and then we sold out of the panel. So this is what you can make. Oh, let me fold it up. That's what you can make, look, matching. So that's what you can make from the panel or if you've got any of the other instructions, you can make any other things or you can just buy it and save it to make the blue the bird quilt, because this one is March, number three. Or you can buy 12 of them and have a complete bullfinch quilt. Because although we've used one of each of them, you might want to just use two of them or three of them and use all different ones. So anyway, that is the great panel announcement that we have got another 100. So if you want one of these, the code is on the screen at the moment. Pop it in your basket and you can have the bullfinch. Buy two, you can make one for your... Um, Save one for the quilt at the end, and then you could have one to make one of the makes. Yes, let's have a look at the quilt. Let's have a look at the quilt. There it is. That's the finished quilt. So you can see the bullfinch in the top right hand corner because that's March, January, wren, February, pigeon, or alternative owl. Um, March is the blue finch, and then next month, April, we're doing the blue tit, and then it will carry on all the way to the robin in December. But you don't have to create yours like your, that. You can have just one bird in it many times or just your favorite three birds whatever so anyway there are a hundred of those back in stock so if you do want the bullfinch he's there just go down the website scroll down click on buy it now and it's yours and um, we have also got two other patterns back in stock now we've only had them on the air once before and they sold out they were so popular which is not really surprising so there is this pattern they're by beth studley called bubble pods and these are just little little storage pods that make this isn't that beautiful and they hang up and you can store all sorts of things in them so the last time we had the pattern only it sold out in moments isn't it beautiful can i open the pattern hannah so i'm going to show you what it looks like i'm going to just open this so this is the pattern and you can make these little things. They're like, they're like mini cat baskets, aren't they? So a quarter of the stock sold on pre-order. They're five and a half inches wide, five inches high and five inches deep. Aren't they beautiful? So in the instructions, it tells you everything you need to know to make them. You can use them, you can hang them up, you can store things in them. So you, if you hang them up on a hook or they can just sit on your desk, you could fill them with thread, um, little bits of haberdashery, you could have them in the kitchen, store all sorts of things in little tea bags, but they're just so cute, aren't they? So there's the um, instructions to show you. It's really nice step-by-step -step instructions of exactly how to do it. They're all quilted as well with lines of quilting across them, so they're really soft. But I like the fact they've got a the little hang. I mean, they'd be lovely in children's bedrooms, or you could put them in the bathroom and put like cotton wool buds or um, little soaps 
all sorts of different things, but they're just sweet. I think they look like little, little cat houses. But look, when you look through the instructions, everything is there, everything you need to know. And in the back, all the templates. I mean, look at the look at the um, template. You'd never work that out. That's, that's really complicated, but it's how it all works. But they've done all the hard work for you, the base and everything. But isn't that lovely? So that is the little one. That's on the screen at the moment. £6.50 for the instructions. Half of the stock is now gone. I'm going to put these back in. You know when you buy wrapping paper like this, and you have to you have to put the sticky side down so it doesn't ruin it. So first time we've had them back again. Aren't they lovely? £6.50 and you've got all the template and obviously you can use it again and again and again and make lots of these little bubble pods. It's perfect for all sorts of storage and they don't use very much fabric either. So, you know, you can use up all your scraps for them and they're bound. They do look nice in your workroom, wouldn't you? Or you could have them in your desk, put them with things like sewing thread, wonder clips, all sorts of small haberdashery, or all the little things. So you could put your pin box and your tape measure and your embroidery scissors. And then, you know, when then in the evening when you go and stitch in the living room watching the TV, you just take your little pod with you. All sorts of just things. It's not just for sewing. You can use them for all things. The other one that we have is the larger storage pod. So there's the picture. Well, this is what it looks like. It's lovely, isn't it? Look, that's how it all stays. It's all fully lined. First time we've had it back on. And there's a lot of people who in the first time and bought the first one have bought the bigger one as well so it's a different shape used for different things should we have a look so i love the photo on the oh, that's the photo there of them all hung up it's not it's a different you can't just make the other one bigger because look they are different sh they are different shapes so this is a much rounder one whereas this one is taller you can put pens bottles of wine very good for beer you could hang them up all sorts you could probably get two bottles of beer in there i should think but you know for sewing things you could um put all your scissors or all your marking tools in there lots of things in the bath you probably get a toilet roll in there i should think you could have all your toilet rolls hanging up so they've all got a, i mean you don't have to put the little hook on if you're not going to hang them up but let me show you the instructions so these are £6.50, 11 inches high and 6 inches wide. I love, love these. So all the instructions in here, templates. So they've all got to, to get this shape. There were darts all the way around and it shows you exactly how to put the darts in, all the measurements. even the base lining as well the lining and the base lining which is a slightly different size but it's beautifully finished and inside i always like to have a look at inside look look how neat it is because the inside is all lined but it'd be really nice in the bedroom wouldn't it you could put your hairbrush and all your hair clips and your scrunchies and everything and your straighteners as long as they weren't too hot but they'd be lovely, wouldn't they? It's just a really nice thing. I like the idea, actually, of having a load of them all hung up together, because I think in the photo, they look really nice. All in different fabrics. And they don't use a lot of fabric either. So you can just use like your little scraps. I wonder if it says how much you need. Oh yeah, so look, like one 20 by 14 inches and 20 by 16 inches. But you could have them, couldn't you, um, by the front door. You could chuck your keys in them, hang them by the front door. You could have, like, you know your cotton um, bags that you forget, always forget to take out so you haven't got them. But you could have key, chuck your keys and your wallet and your phone and everything and they just put them by the front door. So there's loads of different things you can do with them and really does depend on the fabric you use as to what you're going to use them. So, you know, you could um, cut them out, do some embroidery on them first. You could make them... Most people actually have checked out on both of them because they are different shape, but they're lovely, aren't they? And I like the fact that it's just the pattern. So you can, you know, use them for all the fabric that you've got. But we, the last time we had them in, that's why I'm doing special announcement on them, they did sell out. We have also got one other pattern um, by Beth. This, this is really cute. 
really cute. Have we not got the finished thingy? No. But we've got a picture. I'm going to show you the instructions. It's called um, the Penlock Notebook. Now, these are only £4.50. Look how sweet that is. So, it covers an A5 notebook. That sort of size. You know those little note, um, hardback notebooks you can buy? And it's just a mini one. So, the it covers, there's all the instructions. So, it covers the notebook. And what's clever about it, it's called the Penlock Notebook. Because the way that it's held together is by a pen. If you get close up on this picture. So, it's got a handle on it and a strap. And then to hold it all together so you can hold it, then a pencil or a pen holds it. So, maybe you've got an 8-5 notebook that you use as your diary or you do use to keep your favourite recipes in. Or you just use it for notes or lists or you use it for your gardening, all different things. Then this is a really lovely cover. And just as a gift, or so maybe you've bought somebody a nice um, notebook that because everyone needs notebooks for writing lists in. You could cover it with this. And isn't it lovely that the... Um, but the pen actually fixes it together. And there's a picture of it in lots of different colourways as well. Anyway, it does say it's for a beginner. <coughs> it uses quilting. I mean, it doesn't use much fabric either. So the outer fabric is 9.5 by 17 inches. So it's just your little scraps of fabric because you use a different fabric for the lining. But just quite clever that it's all held together with a pen. So let me just put put it back in. They are really lovely patterns. Yeah, they're just the sort of thing that you would see. You would see these in a nice little sort of boutique gift shop, but you can just make your own. And you know, quite often we do kits, and lots of people ask us, "Can we have the instructions only?" Well, yes, you can. Yes, you can with those. Right. So those are all our new patterns. I'm now going to move over to the other set. To we're going to do embroidery. One moment. I'm moving. Right, so we've got loads of things here, loads and loads, of, but a lot of embroidery. So where would you like me to start, Hannah? Embroidery needles. So let's do the basics. Now, a needle is not just a needle. Oh, Hannah's got a needle question for me. What's your needle question, Hannah? <laughs> and... And she's saying, if, if you're using quick, heavier weight thread for hand quilting, I bought some in-betweens. Well, the thing is, so Hannah says she's trying to do some hand quilting, but she's got some betweens, and the thread is too thick for the eye. Well, luckily for you, Hannah, betweens needles come in very various sizes. So you're probably using a size 10, I would imagine. Well, you probably bought size 10, which is the average size. It depends what th what thread you're using. But betweens needles can be bought in many different sizes. So if your thread does not fit through the eye of your needle, you just need to, be, need to buy a bigger size. It's that simple. It's that simple. Anyway, but you see, that's the thing is that every needle is something. If you are, if you are doing something like embroidery or quilting and... The point of a betweens needle is a specific length to allow you to hand quilt. So you don't want to change to a different needle, you just need a bigger one. These are embroidery needles. The other name for them is cruel, because originally they were used for cruel wool. They have a nice rounded eye so that they will slide through the fabric really well, because you don't want, when you're sewing through fabric, you're embroidering through, you don't want the eye to snag on the fabric. They have extremely sharp points. In this pack, this is where Hannah was going wrong. They are sizes five to ten. You've got a mixture of them. And um, the higher the number, the thicker the needle. Well, the lower the number. No, sorry, the lower the number. So a number five, I can't get my head around. The, a number five is, is a bigger needle, is bigger than a number ten. So the lower the number, the thicker the needle. So there's a mixture here, which is great because it means you can use them for different threads. So maybe if you're using a number 10, you would be able to probably get two strands of stranded cotton through. If you were using four or more, you would probably need to move up to a number five. 
but they have um, the eye will slide. It's like um, an oval shape, so they're easier to thread because it's a little bit bigger than a normal sewing needle eye. But they've got nice sharp points. So uh, for any sorts of embroidery, that's what you need. One pound forty nine. Get the right needle for the job. Do not buy ne any odd needles that you might find in a supermarket. They won't be the right ones, but these are the ones you need for embroidery. Um, next, Hannah. Then, obviously, if you've got, you've got your needles, you need all your skeins. I don't know why I've got my eye. I'm going to move that. I'm going to move that. I don't like that in the way. The ironing mat's in my way. It sort of interferes visually with what else you're doing. <laughs> so this is str stranded cotton. This is amazing value for money because you've got 36 skeins of stranded cotton here. They're the normal length, eight metres, six strands in every length, but 36. So it's not just the ones on the front or the ones on the back. There's, there's a whole section, look, in the middle as well. There's loads. Now, if you want to buy, these are Trim It's brand. If you want to buy DMC threads, obviously they're different brands, different qualities. We do sell them on the website um, in individual numbers, individual skeins. But, so just put DMC in the search bit at the top. Hannah's going to show us now. Look, there they all are. She searched them all. There's loads and loads of different ones. So we sell, we try to cover all different qualities and types. So if you're a beginner, um, if you're a beginner and you just want a big stash of it for 9 99 that's fantastic value, isn't it? 36 skeins. So this one is called Pastel. Pastels. But it has got to be fair. There's a black in there as well. They, it works out as 27 pence a skein, which you know is fantastic value for money. But maybe you want to use stranded cotton, not for embroidery, maybe for making tassels or something. And... Um, you know, or like quilting where you tie it and you don't want to spend it because if you, you if you want to make um, a tassel, you need at least one skein of this and that's quite a lot of money. But if you've got a pack of this, it's fantastic. Um, this pack here, so that's the pastel one. This is, um, shall I read you the code? NZZWO5. What's that one called? Brights. Oh, that's just brights. So you've got all the colours of the rainbow on the front, but you've got browns and beiges. And then you've got reds and blues. And then it's, I mean, there are loads and loads of colours, but this, to be honest, that is brighter than that one. So that's about it. But you know, there are some pastel colours in it, but in the main, that one is brighter than that one, or just have both of them. But there's a lot of stranded cotton there. Sometimes, you know, you might only want a little bit of one colour, and it's just a really nice way of starting. If you're new to embroidery, for 27 pence a skein, it's really worth it. I have also got one more, one more. Variegated, love variegated thread because the colour changes along the length of the skein. So as you're stitching with it, it looks like you're really clever and that you've done some lovely colour matching and stuff, but it's not, it just changes colour. And do you know what these are really good for? Friendship bracelets. Do you remember you used to make friendship bracelets? And you tie all the thread together at the front. And we used to do it in school all the time and then you'd knot them all, but you'd get through loads and loads Loads and loads of stranded cotton. Ha, ah, that's really funny, Hannah. <laughs> not gonna, I'm not going to beat that. She said, she said, how did you know it was variegated when you were black and white at school? That's just really mean. Actually, actually, I've only ever had a colour telly, just saying. In fact, I've never had a black and white telly. She's so rude to me. So rude. It's quite, it was quick, I'll give her that. Anyway, variegated, variegated, so it changes colour. So you've probably got about five or six different shades within each skein. So it does look lovely with cross stitch or embroidery. Because there's so many colours in here, say you're embroidering a leaf and you wanted that natural look, use one of the variegated ones and it changes colour. If you were doing some red tulips, tulips are never just one colour, they are many colours. Anyway, oh, we've got a review, a review from Trudy, who says... They look absolutely gorgeous. Not sure whether I want to open them. I might just put them on my shelf and look at them. Then, like doing my bike. I, yeah, I am with you on that. Because, you know, you get it and you think, oh, that's so lovely. I don't really want to open it. So I totally, totally agree with you there. Anyway, if you want stranded cotton, pastel, bright, or 
what do we call it? Rainbow, but it's variegated, variegated. Right, I'll put that to one side. Now, we've got calico by the half metre because calico is fantastic as a base fabric. I think that's the fat quarter. Yes. Calico is a fantastic base fabric for embroidery because it has that natural look. If you look at it very carefully, it has like a natural seeded look within it. Um, so it works well with many different colours. It's a real, it's a very inexpensive fabric. This is, oh, now the calico is extra wide fabric. It's a really big fat quarter. In fact, I would tell you how big it is. So we haven't got a tape measure. Where's the tape measure gone? Oh, oh no, I found it. Panic over, panic over, stand down, stand down, stand down. So the fabric is obviously half a metre, which is about 20 inches. But in width, it's 77 centimetres or 30 inches. So that's a super big fat quarter. Now, the fat quarters are pre cut, so if you multiply, you'll just get more fat quarters. It won't come all joined together. But it is really good because it's a really nice base fabric. It's fairly inexpensive, but it is beautiful. So, say you were making a cushion, it beautiful as a cushion front, but also very good for backing it. Um, bodies, if you're making dolls, because it does have that natural look to it. Bodies, just general bodies. <laughs> Anna's laughing at body, toy bodies, it's really good for. It's very good for lining things and backing things, but actually I think people forget how beautiful calico is in itself. Maybe you just want to do some embroidery hoop art, where you just do so, embroider a design and then you frame it in a hoop. That looks lovely as well. So what? I think that's the best thing at calico. It's um, really cheap, but really lovely. So that's the fat quarter. Oh, 90% of people multi bought. How much is that? Can I I'm not see, am I seeing things? How much is that for the half? 99p. Do you know, the problem is, is the graphics on this screen are so small, can't see them. I thought, well, I'm not going to say it's 99p because it's obviously not. And it is. 99p. Well, and actually, I prefer calico to like an ivory or a white fabric for embroidery. It's a much nicer look to it. And actually, I'll tell you, it's nicer to embroider on. The weave of it is slightly more open than a quilting cotton weight. It's not open like um, a hessian or anything like that. So before I came and worked on Sewing Street, I worked on Love Embroidery magazine. So I did do a lot of work and in, in research. In fact, I still do a little bit of work for them now, just on the side, just a little freelance little bit side, I still do work with them. I do a few designs for them, but calico is nicer to embroider on because it is just a little bit more open than a plain wheel of quilting cotton. So it's easier to sew through and the thread seal on it better. And it's 99p. Now, if you're doing lots, and you're not, it's not just for embroidery, obviously you can use calico for lots of things. We do sell it by the half meter as well. So, and this is where we do the cut to order. So how wide is this, Hannah? It's that wide. It's 60 inches wide because we know that half of it was 30. So it's so it's 60 inches. So it's super wide. 150 centimetres. Oh, it's supposed to be a dash, not a question mark. Um, but so if you want to buy it by the half meter, it's 249 for half a meter. But if you but this is where we cut to order, not like with the fat quarter, you'll just get loads of them. But if you want to make twirls or um, backing lots of things or backing a quilt, be really nice for that because it is a bit wider as well. Um, maybe you want to have a go at dyeing your own fabrics, a bit of tie dye. It's very good for that. It just is a, it's lovely in itself. You can dress making. I mean, you know, a, even a little cotton blouse in the calico is beautiful. It drapes well. It has a really nice feel to it. And at 249, absolute bargain. But we will cut it to order. So if you want like 10 metres of it, just put 20 units in your basket and you will have 10 metres of calico. How exciting would that be? A lot of people use it for, um, you know, like weddings and stuff. They'd use it to sort of make tablecloths and back chairs. It'd be quite a nice dress, though, wouldn't it? Quite fancy calico dress. It was just, a, it's more natural, isn't it? I like the way it has all the little seeds in it. So that's the calico by the half a metre. And then we have it the fat quarter, but that's the, the choice of two. 
What should we do next? Oh, we've got a suggestion from Wendy. Oh, calico is great for needle felting pictures. I mean, this is um, doesn't happen often in life that something that is actually lovely is quite cheap. This is one of those occasions that doesn't happen very often. Jelly is the other one. Jelly, don't you just love jelly? I love jelly and it's really cheap. <laughs> but we don't sell jelly. Mm. Right, we'll talk about scissors instead, not jelly. But jelly is very cheap and very nice. My um, ears keep falling off, so I keep fiddling. That's better. My ears are falling Right, fine now. Now, these scissors are perfect for embroidery. I quite often, well, most times, put these on yarn lane as well because these are really good because they're very sharp and very pointed. In fact, one of my friends messaged me the other day and she said she wanted to buy a pair of scissors for a friend who was into embroidery. What would I suggest? I said, these, these are the ones. I mean, they're not, I, I said, you know, I think she wanted to buy this amazing embroidery scissors gift. I said, you can get more expensive, more ornate ones. But to be fair, these are really good quality. They're Fiskars. They're very sharp and they've got very sharp points. So for the cutting things like buttonholes or, you know, when you have to make that little snip to put your magnetic clasp in. Or for cutting yarn, brilliant, for embroidery thread. And they're not too long. I actually have my own pair that live in my sewn case of my very own pair that I bought myself. Didn't even steal them, which I was tempted to. But unfortunately, all the ones in this office are sealed in this package, so I can't slip them into my pocket. But they were, just yesterday, I recommended them some, and these are the best embroidery scissors. Because they're, they're good quality, but they're very fine and very sharp. So, and good for knitting too. But they're really good just to have by your sewing machine. That's what I actually bought them for. Um, is to sit next to my sewing machine and then I use them for just snipping threads. And you don't lose them because they've got nice orange handles. So that's those lamps. Now, very important. Oh, I might need to plug this one in. Ah, yes. Look, see, if you plug them in, they work better. We're, we're having a plug sharing. It's a bit like a house share, only it's plugs. <laughs> The plug sharing issue. Now, last week we had the lady in. What was that? Was that? Claire from Na Nature Lighting. Native. Claire from Native Lighting, who explained all of these. It was brilliant. These are fantastic. I really like this one because this is the one I want because I, there's sort of some embroidery I've kind of given up on because <laughs> I can't see. But this is amazing. This is amazing. So it's got a light. There's the light. OK, and you get different warmths and different brightnesses. So you get daylight. So brilliant for colour matching, because you know what it's like? You start stitching with something that you think is red and the next day it's not actually red at all. It's sort of a pinky colour that you haven't planned on being. So you've got different warmths of light, but this is the best bit. Hang on, let me just like that. There you go. When you lift up the little lid, it's a magnifier as well. So what should we do? Should we do needles? Right, OK, look at those. Look at those, tiny. Right, hang on, I'm gonna get it under the light. Oh, hang on, I need to angle it. Yeah, you, oh, I can't do it, I can't. It's like really, it's like, but. So when I look through this, wow. No, I mean, look at that, so if I, do I have to put it flat? I have to pretend the camera's me. That's really, really hard. It's like, stop. It's like asking me to pat my head and rub my stomach. Okay, look at that. Right, Vasily, watch. That's it, really. And there it is. Look at that. Three-time magnification. So, there are often, I want to use a specific size needle, and even with my glasses on, I can't thread it, I have to use a bigger one. But just for threading needles, it's brilliant. 42 99 it's fantastic. You can have it on your desk when you're sewing. You could have it on a small table beside you in the living room. So when you just need to see something a bit tight, or maybe you're struggling to um, thread your sewing machine, you could just use this beside it. It's really nice, it's lovely for color matching. And you know, if you only want just a small area, if you just think, well, is that navy? 
or is that black or what sort of shade you want to get because sometimes you make things and you color match at night and then you realize the next morning it's completely different but it's just a really nice light if you don't want to use the magnifier it's easy you just close that down it's got a nice gooseneck and it's not one of those it's all enclosed so it's not like one of those that will collapse you know like those shower cables it, and it really will bend to exactly what you want it to do it's led so look it's really really bright it's led so it doesn't get hot but yeah we worked out that it would last you 20 years if you used it for eight hours a day so i don't think you're ever going to need to change the bulb and you can change the brightness so actually do you know what it'd be really nice as a bedside light for reading as well um it's quite small i mean it's got, it's got a plug but you know if you were going away and you wanted some decent light or maybe you were going on a workshop and you thought oh i know i'm going to really struggle i won't be able to see anything you could take this with you because it's a really nice, it's got a nice weighty base as well. So that while you're sort of like moving this around and playing with the magnifier and looking and got it down here, this, the base is nice and weighty so it, won't, it wouldn't pull off. So you've got the on off switch and then you've got the different brightnesses. You see, you just keep pressing it, it changes brightness. Really super bright. And then you've got the different light levels, whether you want the sort of the warm light or the daylight. But I just think, you know, for one of those things that we sort of forget about with, with lighting. And I think there are many of us who have stopped doing certain crafts. I know a lot of people who say, oh, well, I always used to do cross stitch, but I don't do cross stitch anymore because I can't see. Well, that's a shame. You don't have to give up the crafts that you can't see. You just need to buy a decent light with a magnifier. And then that will help you. And even if you just have it so you can thread your needles, I mean, it's just, whoa, makes your eyes go funny. I'm going to get one of these just so I can thread a needle. But that is fantastic. Or, you know, just when you want to see something close up. That's yeah, I, But you don't have to use the magnification bit all the time if you don't want to. But that is a fantastic piece of equipment. You know, there are different qualities and levels of lights that nature light, native lighting do. And we were talking about them last week. But you have a different light depending on the sort of job that you want it for. And this is perfect for, um, you know, just smaller things that you might be doing. But... It's still very, very good quality. I like that one. Fantastic. I'll just put that to one side. Right, I'm going to, we've got this book here because I want to talk to you about iron on transfers. This is lovely book anyway. It's called Botanical Embroidery and it's called Pattern Plus because it has iron on transfers as well. So now there is actually a price reduction on this. So it used to be $19.99 and now it's $14.99. Bargain. So in the last few that we've got left, we have reduced the price. Now it is the most beautiful book. If you like embroidery, but you don't really know where to start with design and patterns, in the book there are lots and lots of different designs. And in here, they go through all of the different ones. They're all botanical and they give you um, examples of what you can do and what stitches you can use with them. So we go through them all. They've even got insects as well, ferns and lace. There's a stitch guide in the centre so that tells you. So in here, so say, for example, we were going to stitch the rosemary. Um, it says whip chain. I like to use whip chain stitch in different colours. And then <coughs> I make stab stitches. And then it says all the different stitches. So this one um, uses fern stitch. So when you then get to it, all the stitches that are mentioned in there are covered in great detail with diagrams as well. So nice and easy to do it. Um, then there's some ideas of different projects that you can do. So this is about, well, this is a picture with a shadow box frame. Shows you exactly how to do it. Table runner tells you exactly how to do it. I mean, that is beautiful, isn't it? So what they've done with this mix is so many skills. They've embroidered. Um, it tells you which pieces to do, which patterns you should do on it. And they, those patterns are all in here. And then you, it's all quilted. I mean, isn't that absolutely stunning? <coughs> I mean, it looks really difficult and really complex. But when you actually look at the flowers themselves, they're using really quite simple stitches. There's nothing tricky in there at all. That's lovely. Look at the pillow. That's really, really nice. And it uses, um, it's got insects in it as well because it says, refer to stitching the botanical designs and insects for what they do. So that's, that's you could use that design 
for any of the anything in the book but it's just nice that it gives you idea because it actually also it's not just all about the embroidery it tells you what size strips of fabric you need to buy to do all the borders as well so it isn't just about the the embroidery it gives you some really nice ideas of how to do it um, a botanical thread board oh that's beautiful isn't it it's a really nice way of keeping your thread, but you could use that as a notebook cover. It's just Queen Anne's lace. And again, it looks really complex, but it's not really. It's very simple ideas. And then there's some more design ideas. So this is really all about how to do embroidery stitches, some lovely transfers and traces for them, but also pictures and ideas of what you can do with it. I mean, it is stunning, isn't it? You know, something like this would be really hard if you're not very good at drawing like me. You'd never be able to draw that yourself, but all of the designs are in here. But what is great about this book? So yes, you could just trace them, but you don't, which is good because you might want to just trace them. But in this book, there are full size iron on transfers. Now the great thing about an iron on transfer, it's, it's just there, it's just there, you've got it. I mean, I don't, for this for this price point of fourteen ninety nine, that's what you would pay for four sheets of iron on transfers. But with this, you get the book with all the stitch guides and the ideas and the colours and things you can do. Now, these are fantastic because you can use them more than once. You can, depending on how hot you iron them, so you can use them and they will transfer. They get a bit lighter each time, but you normally think about three or four times. But then once you finish using them, you can use them to trace anyway. And there's a f and the folder, this this here, the book, and all the um, designs go in there. I mean, look at that there. That's a quilt where they've got a different flower embroidered on every one. There's insects. I like this one. You'll notice one's missing because I used him as a little practice. But that design there. In fact, let me turn it round. Is that the right way up? Okay, that design there is. I've got to find it. Right, there's the book. Where did the wonder where it had gone? Is, um, you see that design there? I said absolutely stunning as a picture or a cushion. You could use it. Imagine that in the centre of a quilt. That is this. So all you have to do is iron that onto your fabric. It'd look fantastic on calico, wouldn't it? I'm saying that because I love calico. It'd also look really nice on white fabric or it would look lovely on silk. You shot particularly that, um, you know, Dupion silk that's got all the sort of slubs in it. But you just iron that on and then you've got immediately got that easy peasy. Now, the good thing about iron on transfers, I'm going to show you to use them, is um, with these, don't iron them afterwards because they will fade a bit. And when you wash them, they'll fade a bit. So that's the great thing is if you haven't managed to cover all of your stitch and we can't, you can't guarantee that they will come out completely, but they will fade with ironing and washing. So you've got insects as well, love all the bees. Four patterns. There's another one. I mean, you'd be paying 40 99 normally for all sheets, but you're getting all the book and the inspiration as well. I seem to have five here. Look at all of this. Have I got two of the same? I've got another one. Maybe there's five. Look at that. Five, five sheets. Yeah, because there's number five. Five sheets of iron-on transfers, all different sorts. So you've got little sprigs here, and then you've got things like this. It's a whole wreath. I mean, isn't that lovely? Centre of a cushion, absolutely beautiful. And then you've got, I think what's lovely about it is it, because obviously in the wild, there will be bees. So you've got lots and lots of different bees and ants, ladybirds, all different sorts. So shall I give you a quick show how this works? So you need your iron. Now I cut one of these out earlier. No, I'm, gonna, I'm going to use a new one. Right. Now, these are not fabric scissors that I'm using to cut these, just saying. So, what I would say, it's easier if you cut them out because then you don't start transferring other bits. Um, choose the fabric that you want to place it on. I'm going to put it on this little fat quarter of K. 
calico. Right. So decide where you're going to put it first. I mean, I'm just, I'm just giving you an idea of press it so it's nice and flat. You know, and if you're going to be putting it in the centre of a piece of fabric, measure the centre of it, mark it with a pin or something, measure the centre of your design, mark that. Do all of your calculations before you start your ironing. All these squiddles around. So now I've got one of the transfers, which is, um, I think that's a ladybird in full flight or about to take off. Because you know how when, you know when ladybirds open their wings? So place it face down, exact, work out before where you want it to go. I'm going to put mine there. Then, because you need to iron it for a while, put another piece of fabric on top to protect the fabric underneath, making sure that doesn't move. A little tip for that, if you want to keep that still, is if you get some pins, what you need are pins that don't have ends on, which I don't think, I, had, I was using some earlier in my demo, just normal dressmaker's pins that don't have ends on you can just hold it very slightly in place. And if you push it in, it'll go right into your ironing board. So you can hold that all the way round. But you need those little dressmaker's pins that just have metal ends to do that. But that will hold it still. Because you don't want it... The most important thing with iron-on transfers is you don't want them to move because if, you, if they move, you will get a slightly blurred look. Um, so the important thing is you're not ironing, because we don't like ironing, we're pressing. Pressing is a joy, ironing is a chore. So make sure that stays still, and then you press on top. Now, if your motif, like mine, is very small, you can just leave it in one place. If it's bigger, you just keep moving it, but just make sure you pull it up and then go back down. Don't iron, because it will shift it. Now, I tried one of these out earlier, and I did it for 10 seconds. It didn't come out very hard, very, dark so I did another 10 so I think about 20 seconds but what I would suggest with you because it does honestly depend on the fabric that you're transferring on just give it a test so what it says is with these is to leave it to cool slightly don't not to go cold but now this is where it's important so if you've got it pinned in place this will make your life easier is hold put your finger on the transfer and then you pull that back slightly and see if it's transferred. If it's enough, that's fine, you can remove it. So let me take it away. And look, now we've got that transferred. And it's lovely, it's green as well. It's not black, it's green. I really like that. Let me just put um, that piece of fabric underneath. One thing I would recommend, and I'm gonna show you why now, when you transfer, particularly on something like calico that's more of an open weave, put a piece of fabric beneath it, because some of the ink will go through, as you can see. We now have a little ladybird on our ironing mat. And I'm hoping it stays there forever. But you might not want to have one of those on your ironing board. But if you put a piece of fabric below, that won't, that won't happen. Now, you'll be able to use this again as well. But if you, um, you can actually trace from that. Once all the ink has come off, there will still be some on here. So do keep hold of them. But the book does come in a little folder. But if you really want to have a go at embroidery, it's just, it's beautiful. Isn't it a beautiful thing? But what I would say is make, is do, so if you're, I mean, I'm a, this is my favorite one. I absolutely love that. He's even got his own bees on it. But pin it down, hold it in place. That's absolutely key. And don't iron, you've got to press. But you know, if you were doing a, a quilt or you wanted to do a wall hanging or a picture you could just have home sweet home in the middle or welcome or something like that but it is beautiful and embroidery is great because you can do it in front of the telly and you can make it up or in the book are all the stitch guides and it will give you ideas of what's the best thing for a stem i mean you know when i look at this picture if, if we zoom in on this picture i mean that that looks like an absolute work of art but honestly all they've done is a bit of stem stitch few straight stitches there even the um if you look at it really closely it's quite easy to see the book will tell you with the flowers what you what stitches you need for what of for which of them anyway so if you look at this transfer that's got these queen anne's laces so if you go into the book it then says queen anne's lace also called wild carrot who knew it says make the stem with a jagged and uneven feather stitch page 12 so you know everything that you need to know on that really is if you've never tried embroidery before i mean fantastic value the fact that it's 
we've only got a very, very few left and I'm not sure we'll be getting them back. So if you do want them, um, you need to pop them in your basket and check out. But beautiful, beautiful embroidery book. And we won't be getting it again. That'll be it. And then it'll be gone because we've, we've reduced it because we can't get it again. And we can't, yes, Hannah's just said there's a note on the system that we can't get it again. And isn't it lovely? So you can cut them all out, keep them in there. But a lot of the traces are in the book as well so that you can use them to trace all. But, and if you want a ladybird on your ironing mat forever. <laughs> That's what I love, you see. So once we sold out this book, we'll always remember it because it's managed to transfer itself. Yeah, well, we're about to sell out. So honestly, if it's in, honestly, it's about to go. If you want it, pop it in your, um, in your basket. So... I'm tidying up as I'm talking, tidying as I'm talking. So we are almost finished for the day on Sewing Street, but don't worry, don't worry, because Yarn Lane is coming. If you are watching on the TV, you're absolutely fine. You can just stay where you are. You've probably got time to make a cup of tea. If you're watching on Facebook or you're watching um, on the internet, on the website, you need to move over to www.yarnlane.com and then you'll see us on them. Um, but we will be back. But Yarn Lane, it's macrame. Now, if you've never done macrame before, you did it years ago. Once ago, the kits we've got, we've got three new kits from Wool Couture with lovely Carrie Gardner, who's going to be demonstrating for us. It's modern, it's updated, it's macrame that you want to own, but using a traditional technique. I think you're going to love this. It's there's some lovely wall hangings and plant hangers, obviously, and some beautiful rainbows as well. So just join us. Not long, well, a few minutes for that. But before I go, I'm going to let you know what we've got on tomorrow on Sewing Street. So at eight o'clock, we've got Japanese Spring Fabric Collection with Delphine. Ooh, nice. wonder what she's making with Japanese Spring Fabric. Oh, I bet it's lovely. I bet it's very, very creative. She always does, doesn't she? Nine o'clock, we've got Village Fabrics Japanese Wall Hanging with Yvonne. Yvonne, is it Japanese day tomorrow? We've got Japanese. Hmm. 10 o'clock, we've got Ink Unleashed Fabrics. That looks like a new fabric range. Beautiful, beautiful fabric range. It's like sort of brush marks on fabric. You're going to love that one. 11 o'clock, Yvonne is back. And at 12 o'clock, we've got Shashko and other tools. New Shashko. This is kind of a Japanese-y sort of day, isn't it? A lot of Japanese things. Anyway, that's Sewing Street tomorrow, but don't go anywhere. Yarn Lane, first time we've ever done macrame. So obviously, because it's the first time, it is the beginners, complete beginners class. If you've never tried it, but want to have a go, you haven't got, can't go on a workshop, this is where you need to come to. We've got beginners kits with everything you need, and it is... Um, and it is going to be, we're going to do it in a way as it's for beginners. So we will see you back here. You've got enough time to make a cup of tea and we will see you back here shortly.